But anyway, as you can see here, by like increasing Incineroar's like overall like Incineroarness, <laughs> we gotta put a stop to the Cuban Missile Crisis before it begins. Like here's her. <laughs> That was so. Roland, we're done with your music take. Get on with Bro, the lecture. My Incineroar lecture, what are you fucking doing? Fuck Incineroar, he's a bottom tier, didn't you know? He's, he's literally bottom. mid. He's. He, actually, I think he is mid now. Yeah, he's upper mid. Come on, Roland. Put he's, some respect on Yeah, him. literally mid, Ed. But, anyways. <laughs> but enough about that garbage lecture. Are you all ready to hear about competitive Smash Brothers? Really? The best way to play Smash Brothers? Oh, yeah. What about yeah, Extreme so Smash? What about the door? Extreme Smash is second. Well, imagine everyone can hear us fucking screaming. <laughs> Okay, so, so the neighbors are screaming about Smash Brothers. <laughs> Shush. We have a lot of terminology to get through today, uh, and I'm not. I don't know what everyone knows and does not know, and I don't want to be redundant. So if I say a word like zoning, jump squat, or plus on block, and you have no clue what the fuck I'm saying, please ask. I know what none of those words mean. Do you want me to go over those three words I just said? Sure. Yeah. How fast do you go over them? Really fast. All right, let's go. Zoning is when you keep people away from you. Jump squat is the animation before you actually oh jump, God. and plus on block means the attack you're using, your opponent can't act out of it out of block when you hit their shield with it. Yeah. Makes sense? Good. Today we're going to talk about competitive smash. See, Sonic is blue because he's always plus. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> We start with Smash 64 and our guy, our main man, Sakurai. I'm putting him at the top because he's gonna overlook everyone else. Who the fuck is Sakurai? What did he do? What are his credentials? <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna tell you. One day, Sakurai, an employee at Nintendo, was dogging the shit out of his friends in Street Fighter or something. No, no, see, you're not even getting it right. Okay, you tell the story then if you know it so well. So one day, Sakurai, on one of his breaks or whatever, like he's like, man, I'm tired of making Kirby, I'm gonna go out to the arcade real quick. So he goes to the arcade, like hops on King of Fighters, right? And he's like, damn, I'm pretty good at this. And he dogs the shit out of someone in King of Fighters to such a degree where he actually feels bad about it afterwards. <laughs> and he's like, damn, I should make a fighting game for people that suck at fighting games. <laughs> And then Smash Bros came about. So Smash 64, he was thinking, hmm, let's make it more about sumo wrestling, where instead of trying to lower your opponent's health, you're trying to blast them off the stage, and we'll call it Dragon Force or something. Dragon shit. King, bro. Dragon King, Dragon okay. King, Dragon King, Dragon King, Dragon King, come on. Dragon Rick King, Rick sure. King. Apparently Ed wants to do this lecture. So he, he, he comes up with Fighting King, and he's like, fuck, I gotta design characters for this shit. Fuck that. I'm gonna put in Mario and shit, and we're gonna see what the execs think of it, and then I'll design the characters. And they're like, great, let's do a Mario crossover game where everyone else is fighting. He's like, ah! So he... Cool, sounds fun, he says, in 1999. <laughs> he's like, great, this will be a good idea. It will not kill me in 20 years. <laughs> Foreshadowing? So, wait, what? Foreshadowing? A little oh, bit. Boy. A little bit. <laughs> So, what is Smash Brothers? You, uh, well, I mean, like, you have a stage, you, you exist on it, and st <laughs> Fuck! God damn it! It's the fuck. God damn it! it! Sounds like gay sex. Okay. Yeah, nice planning, Roland. Nice planning. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. You nice use down, you. You're negative. You're negative. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what happened? <laughs> My fucking pointer's facing the wrong, the wrong yeah, direction. Worst counter in the game. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this! A fucking trainer. Yo, Epto? <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so, you're on a stage, right, and you can move uh, left and right, but you can also jump on other platforms, which is unlike most fighting games, and so you have some attacks. You have a jab, where you just press the attack button. You have a forward tilt, where you press the attack button plus the direction. This works for up and down, so up tilt, down tilt, right? Woo. Then you can do forward smash, where you press the direction and the attack button at the same time. Works with up smash and down smash as well. If you're in the air, these are called aerials, and you can't smash attack in the air unless you're some weird character that doesn't exist like yet. Like Raster. Like Raster. Like Raster. Finally, you have special moves. Up special, down special, neutral special, forward special. Neutral special does not exist in Smash 64, so don't worry about that. Ooh. Finally, Wait, uh, 
Wait, what? Is it neutral special? Ne neutral special exists, forward special does not. Did I say the wrong thing? Now? No, no, yeah, I, I, I never, I just got confused. Good thing. All right, so that, that, that's a thing. Uh, there are shields, you can shield attacks, but if you take too much damage to your shield, then you shield break, and you're just left there vulnerable and your opponent can kick your ass. Yeah. Uh, you can grab people who are shielding by grabbing and other shit. Because this is you, because when you lose, you have to get wrung out or you have to ring out to defeat your opponent. You, you, if you're getting launched, you can actually influence the direction you're being launched in. This is called DI. Fake how, how it works is, let's say you're being launched upwards, for instance, and you're wanting to not be launched upwards. Most idiots press down. Don't do this. This just straightens up your angle and makes you go higher up. Oh. You want to change your angle to be perpendicular to where you're being launched, so it curves the direction, right? You see that? Ooh. I'm gonna do that. Ooh. Totally. See how it gets lower when see, I push I don't it? Smash DI because I'm cool. There's also I Smash DI. Well, Smash DI well, is also important, but it only works when you're being attacked I'm at the time. Now. You can <laughs> DI while you're being hit. What this makes known as Smash DI from other fighting games? Uh, you. You get launched out. Most most fighting games, you have to lower the opponent's health, and you do this by kicking their ass. In this one, you have to kick their ass, and then they have to not recover back on stage. And they can, like, do stuff to recover back on stage. Hey, how do they tell this? How do they what? How do they tell how far they get launched? What do you mean, how do they tell how far they get like, launched? Like, like, what's, like, hey, I'm at blank. Oh, that percentage, means, do you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, instead yeah. of health, there's percentage, yes. Yeah, there you go. My apologies, I did forget to mention that. And so Smash 64 comes out and people like it. That's Smash 64, everybody! Yeah! That's literally everything there is to mention about this game. Uh, Ness was in it. Watch the Earthbound lecture. And that's all you need to know. So then people... So then... Uh, executives at Nintendo were like, Great, can you make a launch title for the GameCube in 13 months? What? <laughs> and he was like, Ah! Uh oh! Uh -oh. Well, well, and well. Was, the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, okay, I gotta make a bunch of clone characters. And so he's working on Melee, and he's like, oh, fuck, how do I fucking do this? So, a little aside, we're gonna have a lot of asides here, because there's a lot of branching stories that happen throughout this whole shit. Yeah. But as an aside, uh, while he was developing Melee, he decided to do a poll on the internet to decide who was going to get added into this game. Crossover game. People wow. are excited to know who gets in. So he does a poll, 500 Ooh. people enter, and the highest voted character is Bowser. Stop. No, Sonic was not the highest <laughs> voted character. <laughs> Shut up. In fact, the highest voted character that did not get in was Gino, who had 50 votes. Fun fact, James Bond had two votes in this. Yeah. Yeah! He was coasting on that he gold did. Yeah. Yeah, coasting on that golden eye shit. Um, His fucking everyone's favorite video game <laughs> James Bond, yes. So <laughs> Melee gets revealed and would, Bowser's would, in it. Would, would James Bond be a scrimblow? Which was, does he James Bond would not be a scrimblow, but he would not be a JRPG <laughs> McSword guy. What is a scrimblow? Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, get to that later when like We'll get to that when that becomes relevant during the Platinum Age. What is the Scrimblo resurgence era? Scrimblo Scrimblo era happens Platinum Age. <laughs> you fucked this all up! So melee, it was development hell. It was made in 13 months on spaghetti code and literally everyone was tired of dying. And it shows! This game is glitchy as fuck! Very glitchy is what I mean by that. What? But how did it do? Did well. People were like, wow, this game is really good. In fact, five days after the game launch, Pete, someone found, hey, if I'm on the right side of the stage as Luigi, or the left side, and I directionally air dodge towards the ground, I can slide to the middle of the stage. That's weird. Why is that happening? Big day for annoying people. Big day for annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> they, post about, they post about this on a forum asking why this happens, and they get a response explaining exactly how this happens with variables in everything that takes place. This is known as a wave dash. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when you, because when you air dodge towards the ground, all your horizontal momentum stays. So you can slide on the ground, but you are still standing. So you can do all your standing attacks. Normally when you're running around, you can only do dash attacks. So this is a big deal. Also, you can move really, really fast. That's also pretty cool. Can Not you as <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
and then up snatch, and then up snatch. <laughs> By the way, the person who explained this in the forum post was Sakurai himself. What? Oh, what? God. Sakurai. People say that wave dashing is a glitch. It's not. Sakurai intended it to be there. He just didn't intend for it to be used as much as it got, does get used. Wow. Fun little fact there. I feel like I already so see important. the danger forming with the creator being this involved with his online community. He planted the seed. He planted the seed. Yeah. Like, I see how this could eat him alive in a few years. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Woo, okay. Um. Fuck. Melee, right? Melee. Let's talk about the first melee tournament that happens. Five months or four months or some shit like that after the game launches, a guy named DZ decides he's going to host a tournament in San Jose, California, from his mom's basement, and he posts about this on the Smash Boards, which was a forum that still exists to this day. And he's like, "Hey guys, I'm hosting a tournament for Smash Brothers. It's Golden called Golden. Tournament Go." <laughs> Tournament go, six people enter. That's a lot of people. <laughs> more than then he's like, all right, guys, three months later, I'm hosting Tournament Go 2. Seven people enter the tournament. Oh, fuck me. Well, that's more than Shocking it's University. It's still being hosted in his mom's basement, by the way. <laughs> like Shocking University? Like Shocking <laughs> University. <laughs> Except it's one So then he decides, all right, I've hosted this same tournament twice, and, like, I'm not even getting double-digit entrance. Something needs to be fixed here. So he goes to the Smash Boards and, and declares himself... Did I? Uh-oh. I didn't, I didn't put him down. But he declares himself the best Smash player in the world. Can you hand me a marker, please? Wait, did he just one-piece this shit? He just one-piece <laughs> I'm the king of Smash. DZ declares he is the oh, king of Smash. God. The pirate. D. Smash. The, the will of DZ. The will of DZ. Yes. He declares he's the best player in Smash Brothers, and everyone's like, "Shut the no. fuck up!" No. Nuh uh. That's and this time, but that's still so monkey D. Still hosting this in his mom's basement, by the way. Fifty people enter. Holy oh. shit! That's so smart. That's a lot of people. What a he decides, genius. "Wow, this is working a lot." Tournament Go Four. Shit. That's insane. Exactly. Three genius. months later, he hosts Tournament Go Four. Ninety people enter. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did he win the third one? He did not win any of these tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> He's still the best one. No one knew who won the tournament until much later, Dude, but he just sort of crazy. declared himself the winner. He's like, guys, I'm, I'm the winner. Source, trust me, bro. God, he was just like, guys, so, don't fucking kill me. Just between, like, between tournament go... Four, five, and six, which were all the tournaments, we meet some of our main characters, or some of the original characters in Smash Brothers. Season one cast. Season one cast. We got Ozzy. We got Chudat. We got Isai. Who the fuck are these people? <laughs> we got Captain Jack. And we That's got the me. winner of Tournament Go 4, the new best player in all of Smash Brothers. Monster Heroes. Exactly. Uh, Ken. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> My boy! Masters? Whoa! Not Ken Masters. Ken oh. is a Mark main. Uh, by the way, we haven't even mentioned the tier list. We will get to that. Oh, but that's, that's important and comes in later. Oh, wait, wait. Speaking of Marth, what did Melee do for that whole franchise anyway? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a competitive Smash lecture, but we can talk about Big this. Big day for annoying people. Big day for annoying people. Fire <laughs> Emblem was not, like, fucking existent until Melee. Uh, Nobody what? played... Fire Emblem got localized because Marth was popular. Yeah. yeah Fire Emblem got yeah. localized because Marth was a playable character in Melee, and he was a very popular character in Melee. And Ken maimed him. Ken was a question? Okay, so this was a really genius marketing move for Nintendo because they were able to make old properties more valuable through this crossover event game. Yes. And they still do it to They this still day. do it to this day. They except... still release characters for games that have not came out yet. <laughs> and or everyone Twilight. hates it. Everyone hates when this happens. The only Because it's always Fire Emblem. It's always, it's always Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Like Marth is from Fire Emblem. Like Smash Fire Brothers Frost. just advertises Fire Emblem. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> fuck every other idea. Yeah. yeah. Tournament go, six happens. He uh DZ decides, you know, I'm done hosting these in my mom's basement. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to bring these to a uh, fucking uh, uh uh elementary school auditorium and oh. host it there. Oh. <laughs> The Smash community. Wow. <laughs> wow. It was right there in the beginning. <laughs> the seats are so for you. So 120 
20 people enter that tournament. Oh, kids teasing and Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last tournament DZ hosts for Smash Brothers. After this, he becomes like a big guy and he becomes like a, a an employee in Capcom. He runs the esports tournaments for Street Fighter V nowadays. What? Yeah. That's, yeah. Crazy. that's crazy. And that's what we need to know about DZ. We'll get to him later, because he does some other stuff for the Smash community. But that's what you need to know. Oh, fuck, I forgot. I got... I'm just getting a little hot, you know? Just a little... Just, just a, a little, little fucking... Just like, a little... Hot. <laughs> Jack's nose, is not an excuse to get shirtless. We do have a hot professor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, let's talk about the tier lists, alright? Because yeah. this is an important thing you need to know, is which characters are good and which characters are bad. And in Melee, in 2004, the best character in the game is Sheik. Sheik is really, really fucking fast, really? hits really, really fucking fast, and runs around really, really fucking fast. Sorry. Now, in theory, these characters are all supposed to be that balanced, right? <laughs> Yes. No! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Game and Watch means out here in the tournament. <laughs> oh my god. Between Smash stop. 64, oh, Melee, man. and pretty much the rest of the series, the games are not very well balanced. They get better balanced melee. as they go along, but in Melee, there's like half the cast is not viable in tournaments. To this day, half the cast is not viable in tournaments. No, like it's okay. so too big for it. Guys, can we get to lecture? I'm going to get to the Mr. Game and Watch show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, best character in the game is Sheik. Second best character in the game is Fox. Fox is Fox. really, really fast, but unlike Sheik, he's really, really stubby. So, really fast, really stubby. And what's weird about Fox is that he has this weird reflector move, where he just turns into a blue hexagon and sort of just reflects projectiles. Right. And it doesn't seem very useful. In <clears throat> fact, it's so bad that it's being used as a joke attack. Like, DZ is using this in tournaments as a joke, where he'll, like, jump at an opponent, hit them with this, and then he'll, like, flutter his his uh, sequin shirt to, like, taunt his opponents. Like, you suck so bad you got hit by this move. This becomes known as the shine, because he shines his sequin shirt whenever he uses it. That's where it comes from, by the way. Sequin shirt. For the people who know, that's where this comes from. Chocolate chip. I just found it. So... Fox is the second best character in the game. Third place is Falco, who's just a clone of Fox, has different attributes, not very important. Fourth best character in the game is Marth, who Ken mains. Marth has a lot of good range on him. He's not as fast as Sheik or Fox, but he's still fast enough to beat the shit out of people. <laughs> and then, like, there are other characters. Uh, Ice Climbers is, yeah. I believe, like, ninth or something. Uh, fifth place is Mario, which is really strange, because nowadays Mario is a horrible character. Uh, let me what? look at my notes well, here. Mario's like an all-arounder. Oh, How dare you. Uh, but in Melee, he sucks. Oh, alright. Uh, Mario... Well, he's fifth, fifth place in Melee, you said. Right now, which is weird, because right later now. on, he would be a bottom tier. Oh, the tiers in Melee itself change as time goes on? Yes, as people realize characters are good and bad. Yeah, it's so the meta changes. Yeah. yeah, so as people realize, hey, this Fox character is really good, he goes up in the <clears> tier <throat> list. <clears throat> so anyways... <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I didn't mention this, but Marth has this attribute called a tipper, where if you hit the opponent with the very edge of the Just attack, tip, baby. it does more damage and knockback. Yeah. So if you space out your moves just right, they're really strong. So let's just get stop talking about all the characters, let's talk about the important ones. Peach is in ninth place because she's a floaty character. She has a move where she can pull out tournaments. Sometimes she has a move where she can pull out turnips. Yes. Sometimes she can pull out a bomb instead. Sometimes she can pull out a sword. Sometimes she can pull out what's known as a stitches turnip, which is just a really, really strong turnip that has a 1 in 100 chance of showing up. Or maybe less. I thought it was 1 in 100. I might have done my research wrong. Ice Climbers is in 11th place on this tier list because they're a really complex character. The, the idea is you're playing as two characters with one controller and you're sort of like spacing them out and attacking with both of them simultaneously. What are they from? Ice, Ice Climbers. Climbers. The game Ice Climbers. Climbers. Was this game like known or popular at all before? No. 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 It was a one-off game in the like, NES and to this day it has had no sequels no or anything. Yeah, it just keeps cool. getting reported to other systems. <laughs> yeah. You climb a mountain. 
That yeah, that is the game. <laughs> Uh, where is... That's fucking crazy. Bro. Oh, like, on the bottom <laughs> tier, at 17th place, is Jigglypuff. Because she's really light, dies easy, and uh, really floaty, really not strong. Really slow, too, is which a is a funny move. Why she did they this... make her like that, originally? Because she's like a, a balloon. Yeah, you know? I mean the balloon Pokemon. She's the balloon Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, why would they make characters so much weaker than others? They didn't think she was as weak. They didn't gotcha. know the meta when yeah. they were making Melee. They, they didn't know it. Sheik was as yeah. strong. Sheik was supposed to be a counterpart to Zelda, who is like one of the worst characters in the game. People joke that Zelda's best move is down B because it turns you into Sheik. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to remember, Tyler, tier lists are made by a community, not by yeah. like the people who make the game. Yeah. Gotcha. That's why it changes so frequently. I that's another thing that I that, that's why I said, like, please ask about questions, because I did not know that you did not know that. So thank you for asking that. All right, so Ken, as we all know, becomes the king of Smash, wins tournaments go 4 and 5, game over, Melee FC3, MLG New York 2004, and many other tournaments up until 2007, when Brawl comes out. By the way, all we've been, the talking, best about, gun. The all best we've been talking about so far has been the golden age of Smash. The whole, like, melee, everyone's excited for melee, blah de blah de blah people are getting really excited for this. By the way, in 2007, melee gets added to EVO, which is the biggest fighting game tournament in the world. If you win EVO, you're basically the best player in the game. Ken wins EVO. No, I... Wait. Ha <laughs> ha! What do you mean, ah ha ha? I love that. Yeah, the of fucking... course. <laughs> Fuck yeah. What? The, like, I just say I win guy ends up actually winning Evo. No, Ken is not the I win Evo guy. That was DZ. Yeah. Oh, I got it mixed up. Yeah. Keep, 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 keep attention. Keep paying attention. So, <laughs> so, oh, fuck me. we're going to have another aside here. We need to talk about something called a JV3. In a friendlies tournament, a guy named JV3x3 is fighting some loser, and he's dogging him so hard that the guy, that the people who are commentating this fight are like, bro, JV3x3 has not even taken damage and is at four stocks. We're going to call it a JV5 stock because he's at four stocks and it, he hasn't even taken damage, so it's like he had a fifth stock. What is this? JV5. I haven't even explained stocks. I am very sorry. Wow, the brawl is... <laughs> this is very hard, okay? You do this, okay. John. Okay, do you even have a degree in this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and explain the rule... Actually, explain the into all the rule sets of Melee. Can you explain the Melee rule set? <laughs> <laughs> so, the rules are no items on. In Smash Brothers, items can randomly spawn by default. In tournaments, they turn this off. Specific stages are only allowed. Right now in Sma in Melee, pretty much there's very little stages that are banned, but like as long as there's no like weird shit with the stage, it's fine, right? Bro, what about Pokey Floats? <laughs> Pokey Floats is legal right now. What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Oh my God. There's an eight minute timer, which oh, means the Pokemon. match ends in eight minutes no matter what, and both characters are given four stocks, which are like lives. If you run out of lives, you lose the game and your opponent wins. So your goal is to get rid of the opponent's stocks, right? So you got a JV5 stock, you have four stocks, and you didn't even take damage. Congratulations. You're a pro. That all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about Brawl for a minute, because people were getting really excited for Brawl. Melee was booming right now. The community, really happy. What is this Brawl game going to be? Ooh, art direction. Art direction. <laughs> so remember when Sakurai was like, I don't, I want to make a game for people who suck at fighting games? He's suddenly realizing that there are a lot of people who are really good at this game and hates them. <laughs> so he decides, you know, you know, wave dashing, you know, wave dashing. We're gonna remove the ability to do that at all. Yeah. yeah. I go for. Real. We're gonna we're gonna reduce hit stun so there aren't even combos anymore. We're going to add a new mechanic called tripping. Oh my God. <laughs> if you're running or doing any forward action, like forward tilt, forward smash, 
like on the ground at least, if you do any forward action on the ground, you have a chance of tripping, which means your character just falls flat on their ass and has to get back up. Yeah. But while they're doing that, the opponent can just kick the shit out of them. This Why? Why because, because we don't yeah. want people playing this game competitively. This is, this is specifically made to make the game more casual friendly. He does not like the idea that people like Ken are dogging people in this game. He does not like the fact that people are just wave dashing and doing all this complex tech. Does not like it. Right? Save that shit for King of Fighters, he says. Save that shit for King of Fighters, he says. <laughs> so, Brawl comes out. Everyone hates it. Then, because well, Evo's coming, the, everyone all the, all the little kids. Like, oh, all the little kids. Uh, everyone that matters in this in this lecture hates it. Okay. <laughs> then, Evo 2008 comes out. Melee is no longer there. They're replacing it with Brawl because it's the new game. So people are like, "All right, let's give it a shot. Maybe it's good." And it was. Ken gets second place at Evo, no. making him no longer the best player in Smash. Yeah. The winner of Evo is CPU. CPU is not like a computer player. He is an actual human player. He is a 17 year old that was vacationing to Las Vegas at the time, stumbled upon Mandalay Bay and decided to just enter Evo. And then he won. That's insane. He won the goddamn tournament. Fucking madman. Like how you didn't draw him, you just draw Rob. We, I don't actually know what he looks like. <laughs> But he mains Rob, He's so that's it. He literally robot. just came in one, refused to elaborate in the left. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just kicks the shit out of the best player in Melee and leaves. He has not been to a tournament since, and everyone has thought of this as a fluke. Because Ken is the best player in Smash at this time, in Melee. Obviously and then Brawl was made you. really fucking slow and really fucking disgusting. So they are like, Brawl sucks, we're going back to Melee. And you sound weird. like some, like, butthurt fanboys. Yeah! Well, yeah. Smash. yeah! So, half the community leaves to back to Melee to play that. The other half of the community stays with Brawl, and they just sort of... The, the, the country is divided in two. You have the Brawl players who don't fucking matter at all, and then you have the Chad Melee players who are still playing the Chad Melee game. players. In two th by the oh, way, I, forgot, I think this is in 2008, after Evo, Ken retires from Smash Brothers no. to pursue a career in illustration. He's just like me, for real! Oh my god. <laughs> for real, for real. Ken, by the way, is my favorite player. I'm also a Marth main in Melee, so, uh... What the yes, fuck do you play Melee? Yesterday! <laughs> Yesterday, Ed. Oh my god. Does he, beco does he become god. important beyond this? Uh, he comes back, but, like, he's past his prime. Well, he's, he's, going to, he's going to start playing Melee again later on, but he's going to be, like, the old grizzled veteran who's, like, still fighting the good fight. I'm, bro, I'm going to be playing Game & Watch me now. Bring way Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about Game & Watch. Spite and Malice. Game & fucking so, Watch. Let's baby. go back to Melee for a bit, because there's two things I need to talk about. First is Game & Watch. Game & Watch is a really cool character. He's based off of, like, those calculator games. The from, Game like, & Watch. The Game & Watch, okay. right? Like, the the, the, what were the, the Tiger Electronic games? Those stuff? Yeah, oh, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, he's a really cool character, but to make, because they were really strapped on time, they basically copied over Mario's, like, stats and just placed it on him. So he has the same stats as Mario, wow. except for weight. I believe he's the lightest character in the game, with Jigglypuff being second. Because he's paper thin. Because he's, he's paper thin. Yeah. What else? What else? What else? He has a shield, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the shield doesn't cover his whole body, yeah. so he, every time he shields, he just like gets hit. So he has no defensive options in the game at all. Mm -hmm. uh, also, his aerials are really, really good. However, they can't be three out of five of them can't be L canceled due to a coding error. What's an L? What is an L cancel, I hear you asking? Because I forgot to mention this when I talked about wave dashing. This is another tech that's discovered. If you do an aerial and then you're landing, normally you have a lot of end lag because your character's like swinging the sword and then like falling down to the ground, right? If you press L or R while falling, your all that lag is canceled. L canceling, lag canceling, does not mean L. People Cut. think it means... Okay. Go. L and L canceling stands for lag and not the L button, which is the button you press to do L canceling. Got it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I've talked about everything I need... Okay, no. One last thing I need to talk about is 
Fox. People are discovering something <laughs> weird about him, okay? Fox. So, he can run around and be really fast, but remember this weird move he had? People figured out that you can jump out of it. Oh? Frame four, which means really fucking fast, and it comes out frame one, which means it can't come out any faster. Literally no move can come out faster than shine. So people figure this out and are like, hey, I can jump cancel shine, wave dash towards the ground, and do an attack. I can wave dash towards the ground and do another shine. This is called wave shining, and it becomes a very important tech. Oh, no. Because it's really hard to pull off, but you can basically infinite people. So we went from meme to like actual genuine stress. It's like one of the best moves in the game. Fuck people me. argue it is the best move in the game. Fuck me. Along with that, Fox has this other move called laser. If he shoots a laser from, from anywhere on the stage, it comes out really fast, the bullet travels really fast, and it ends really fast. Basically, this is free damage. It's so hard to dodge damage from laser that people don't consider laser damage as counting against a JV4 or a JV5. If you beat your opponent and only took laser damage, it still counts as a JV. That's how strong it is. What's a JV? Like a JV5 stock or a JV4 stock. Uh, okay. Damn. So Brawl... <laughs> Excuse me. Melee Fox, really fucking strong. Meanwhile, in Brawl, people are figuring out that there's a weird character called Meta Knight. <laughs> yes, 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 yes! Meta Knight! Oh. Meta Knight! See, see, it's in the name, Meta. Meta. <laughs> meta Knight dominates the meta, as he is the strongest character in the game by a fucking mile. <laughs> All of his B-moves can recover from the stage back on. Not only that, but they all have the max priority you possibly can have in a move, which means it beats out anything you throw at it. He gets to recover for free. Mm -hmm. Along with that, his up tilt and down tilt allow him to fly, essentially. Yep. He, his up special also lets him fly yeah. around. Yeah. And he's also the fastest character in the game, in a game that's considered wait, wait. really fucking slow. Wait, really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, dude, like, Meta a lot of his attacks... Meta Knight's faster than Sonic. Yes. <laughs> a lot of his attacks in that game also... Wait, out, like, Sonic really and Smash Bros? I thought this was a Nintendo property. Oh, yeah, they started adding third-party characters in Brawl, and they sort of Snicker! just, like... They, 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 they release, they add Sonic and Snake as playable characters in Brawl, which sort of opens a Pandora's box. Yeah. There. <laughs> this is why I thought Sonic was a Nintendo property. <laughs> so God. That makes sense. Fun fact, Sakurai wanted Sonic in Melee, but due to like being made in a year, he couldn't add him in in time. Yeah, um, and he still was strapped for time when adding him into Brawl, so he just made him a ball half the yeah, time in the moveset. He's just, he's like, half the time he's just a blue ball you're fighting. He's balling for he's real. He's balling for <laughs> real. <laughs> so, alright. I think that's enough about Brawl. No one really cares about Brawl. We're I want to give an apology to Brawl, because I was really mean to it in this lecture. In all honesty, Brawl is a really interesting game with its own meta in its own right. It's just that all the main characters went to Melee, you know. Mango and Hungrybox are much more interesting characters to follow than Kony. Which is, I, I love Kony, don't get me wrong. But I found the, there was a more interesting story to tell with the Melee side of things with the Brawl side of things. So, I just want to, like, really quickly go over some interesting stuff about the Brawl meta. For one, the reason stage lists are so strict nowadays is because in the old days of Brawl, Meta Knight really, di like, dominated on a lot of bigger stages, and so they had to get shrunken down. So, we had to, like, cut out, like, Isle Delfino, or Delfino Plaza, excuse me, and I forgot the, all the stages. It's been a while since I did this lecture, if you couldn't tell. But um, that's the reason why stage lists are very strict and why people make the comment that you can only play on like four stages out of like 80 in Ultimate. Along with that, there's this really interesting thing I found where Zero Suit Samus, because she's not technically her own character in this game, spawns with three like armor pieces when you play as her because those are like Samus's armor pieces, right? So she spawns in. She gets those armor pieces, and they act as, like, projectiles that you can pick up and throw, and they're constant, like, hitboxes that stay on the screen for a little while, which is really interesting to me, and I wish I knew that before I gave this lecture, but the more you know. 
Brawl is interesting, but there's an important story to Melee, and that's what I'm here to tell. We're going to move on to a new era called the Five Gods. Remember how CPU was the best character in Smash and then people stopped caring about Brawl? We're going to put him down here, because although he won Evo 2008 and then no one cared about Brawl after that, technically, Does he ever come essentially, back? no. No. Okay. He's gone. We're going to talk Smash. about the new best players, players plural, in Smash, the Five Gods. Literal guide status right now, because these characters these are so dominant. With the fucking <laughs> <laughs> these characters are so dominant that anyone below them loses entirely to them. So let's talk about these characters real quick. Or players, excuse me. First is Mewtwo King. The first Ooh, person to take the mantle. Yeah, I, I, I actually heard of him. I actually heard that guy. Story. The Did first person to take the mantle after Ken. Mewtwo King is also a Marth main, and he is known for being calculated. Very, very smart, calculated, able to do very specific moves very well. He's yes. a mind player. Didn't he do it a thing in Melee where he like beat someone by with every single character in the game? He might have. I haven't heard of that. I thought I, I is there a term for that? that where you just cycle through the entire roster on someone? That's I right. don't think so. <laughs> there should be. Uh, <laughs> shitting on. <laughs> shitting on, yeah. yeah. So, Get shit on. Mewtwo King is so smart that he gets the nickname The Robot because he's able to do calculations at inhuman speeds for how to like do the best possible maneuver in a scenario. He looks like fucking the dude from Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no one who Mewtwo knows. King is so fucking smart that he decides to like just Go play the, no he goes into like the training mode of the game and analyzes all the yeah. frame data of melee nice. he gets all the characters weights all the characters stats all of the characters like attack stat moves on their attack moves he like frames how much range the attack has how fast it is how long it takes to come out how long it takes to end all of that information he gets just by playing this game and this just by like like just learning about it through playing the game, and this this information was so reliable that we still use it to this day. It's online somewhere, and he's responsible for picking that all up. And he becomes the best player in Smash Brothers, Mark Main, right? Uh -huh. Second character is Mango. <laughs> Mango. <What>? It's <laughs> literally chat. <laughs> Mango is a Jigglypuff yeah. player. People have figured out that Jigglypuff is actually really good. Not only mm -hmm. does her light demeanor lightness make her really mobile so she can just sort of float around and hit shit, but she also has two really strong moves, yes. Cool. What game are we doing right now? Melee. We're playing Melee, so fuck Brawl. Fuck Brawl. Okay. Forget about Brawl. Double check. Brawl doesn't matter anymore. So Mango figures out or not Mango, but the community figures out that Jigglypuff has two really strong moves. Yep. Back air is extremely disjointed. What does disjointed mean? It means the, the, the actual part of the move where it hits is disconnected from the actual character. Yeah. So Jigglypuff's back air is significantly disjointed, which means you can like just throw it out and your opponent can't approach you. Right? Yeah. Really strong. Then she has a move called Rest. Rest basically is like the... It, it's your entire body becomes a hitbox and it kills anything that touches it. Yeah. But after you pull it off, Jigglypuff falls asleep and it's just there so people can run up and kill her. So you have to like kill with it or else. You, you have to kill with it or else you lose a stock, essentially. Yeah. So Mango figures out Jigglypuff well, he doesn't figure it out, the community figures it out. Jigglypuff's really strong. He plays Jigglypuff for a while, dominates with her, but decides to move over to Fox after people realize how strong Fox is. Then, oh, he's known for having a very intuitive play style. He's e very easily able to figure out how to connect one move to another move on the fly. So he's have... flow statey. He's not facts and logic guy. He's what? He's like more flow statey. Yeah, he's more flow statey. So like what? Heart player, body player, what? What the fuck does those mean, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Armada! Woo! Oh. Armada! Armada. Armada is from the is from Europe. He's Swedish. And you he's really attractively. They, they all look. Except for thank you. They're all very hot. <laughs> the king just looks so spooky. He's Silver. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Doesn't have like, like shadows or anything. He's just <laughs> he's Silver. <laughs> but anyways, Armada. Armada is from Europe. He he dominates the entire continent in this game, oh. and is so good that he decides to move over to America, where all the better players are. He is a Peach player. 
He's known for having extremely good edge guarding, which means you keep the opponent from being able to recover at all. He's really strong from Europe, becomes one of the best players in the world. Imagine moving to a different continent to play a video game. <laughs> well, Armada! All these, all these people, by the way, do Smash for a living, essentially, at this point. Not essentially, but they don't have jobs, maybe? <laughs> Mommy, I'm a melee player. I don't actually know if they had jobs or not, but this year, <laughs> like, Mango dropped out of school and didn't do his homework. As in high school or college? High school. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bye, For fucking melee. I yeah, might, Mango. I might... <laughs> I might, I might be wrong on that. Uh, there's not much information about these people's personal lives for obvious reasons, but Ooh. so far these uh -huh. three people don't have not jobs sure. from what I can gather, There's except for Hungrybox. Hungrybox yes! is playing Smash Perfect. while having a full-time job as an engineer at a paper mill. What a fucking that bad, <laughs> He is, he is literally <laughs> an anime protagonist in this whole story. Pay attention to Hungrybox, because he's really important. Crab man. Crab man. <laughs> <laughs> Hungrybox is a Jigglypuff player, and he's a really good Jigglypuff player. He gets known for being a very defensive, slow, methodical player. And people don't like this because melee is really, really fast. So Hungrybox eventually becomes a heel to the game. Nobody likes Hungrybox, but he's really good at the game, so people still respect him regardless. And he has defensive play style. Got all that. Then finally, the fifth god, PPMD. Dr. PP. PP. Literally, when he starts playing melee, his name is Dr. PP. He looks like fucking Dr. Confucius. Dr. Oh, PP. It's like a mind <laughs> flare. Then he becomes PPMD. Then he becomes PPMD. I see. Okay. <laughs> 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 this looks like a fucking PPMD cat is. Uh, he he means Marth and Falco at the same time. He's he sort of switches mind. between the two. And he is known for intense mind games. Whoa. He is able to fucking outthink his opponent really well. In, he's, he uses a lot of dash dancing to space out his opponent and then punish it, and then he like baits out attacks and then punishes it. Mm -hmm. He's really good at the game. He's one of my favorite of the five. Probably my favorite of the five, actually. Yes? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I know I have a lot of questions. Do any of these dudes go up against each other at any point? Of course they do. Yes! Yeah! That's, so excited. They don't have anyone else to go up against uh, other than each other because everyone, sucks everyone else fucking sucks at ass at this game. And to give an example, <laughs> we're going to talk about the sixth pl best player at this time, Hax. <laughs> Hax gets his name because he's so good at pressing so buttons that it's like he's at task levels of precision. Task oh means God, really? Task means tool assisted speed run. It's usually used for like describing when you're like using a computer to play a game as perfectly as it can. Yeah. Hax is basically able to play at that level. He's the person who I think he's the person who discovers wave shining actually, but he's Whoa. he's the one who pioneered it and believes that it's the best move in the game. That's great. really good at the technical level of Smash, probably one of the best. He goes up against PPMD and gets three stocks in a minute. Oh. I think he actually gets four stocks in a minute. I might be wrong on that. What the Damn fuck? Me. He gets his ass gets fucking kicked by PPMD. <laughs> so what the fuck? Why is he, how is he even good? good? What the fuck? Because he's better than everyone else behind PPMD. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know if I can live with myself and get my shit. He plays against me. Okay, yeah. this is important. He <laughs> plays against Mango, and Mango's like, hey. Hax, you switch from being a Captain Falcon player to being a Fox player. Fuck you. And so Mango plays Captain Falcon and whoops Hax's ass. You just walk upstairs. That's where that comes from. <laughs> that That's is literally where that comes from. That was from. a joke. That was, that, was, that was a joke. This is the moment when Mango walks up slowly and down smashes Hax. That's how up good up Mango is like, in comparison to Hax. Or do anything. He literally walks up. He just up walks up and down smashes. <laughs> and just kicks him and ki like KOs him. Yes, yeah, and amazing. that KOs him. No effort. Who did this? Did he just walk up Mango slowly? does this to Hacks. Down smash? Bro, is... poor Hacks. <laughs> poor Hacks. Honestly, you're going to be saying that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hacks gets kind of shat on it. Even Drew with like a frown. <laughs> like, he's just he looks like Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's not a mustache. That's supposed to be his upper lip. Oh. I, uh, yeah. Boom. If I drew anyone ugly here, I apologize. But... <laughs> 
These, care these five players are really good, but Hungrybox is notable because he's the only one that people hate. And so he becomes sort of a heel to them. They hate him because he has a job. Yeah. They hate him because he has a job. <laughs> he's a Puff main, and Puff's worst matchup is against Fox, who Mango mains in all of these. So Mango becomes Hungrybox's rival, and they're duking it out all the time. Mango keeps on winning. Hungrybox is trying to become the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. Mango is right now the thing keeping him from that. He has to surpass Mango to become the best in the world. And also Mewtwo King and Armada, but fuck. There's don't a whole worry other, about that. That's a whole other fucking story. That's a whole other fucking story. Fucking playing field. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hax is coming up with a theory. At this point, Fox is considered the best character in the game. And Hax believes that he's so good that if we keep playing Fox, and we figure out how to play Fox to his absolute limits, the game will just become Fox players. And yeah. this becomes known as 20XX. Let me read you the, the copy pasta real quick. Fuck me. <laughs> Alright. Where the fuck did I put that down? I think I highlighted it just so I could find it here. Going. Alright, guys, shut up. The 20XX copy pasta goes. The year is 20XX. Everyone plays Fox at tax levels of perfection. Because of this, the winner of a match depends solely on port priority. The Rock, Paper, Scissors metagame has evolved to ridiculous levels due to it being the only remaining factor to decide matches. Humanity has reached its pinnacle. The low-tier peasants are living in poverty. It seems nothing can stop the great leader of 20XX, Aziz Hacks. Al-Yami and his army, the fox monks, who live in the great monasteries where they levitate while tassing fox with one hand and winning tournaments with the other. The tournament metagame has gotten to the point where everything is played out to theoretical perfection. Yeah, so tournaments go to rock, paper, scissors for port priority, and that's the game. Oh my god. Don't break the internet. Port priority basically means no like player one, two, three, whoever's in the top. Everyone. So in so melee in, fiction. in melee, whoever's I don't I don't remember exactly how it works, but people who have the hot top pop pro, top port priority win out in most occasions where like two people hit each other. And I believe instead of because sudden death isn't a thing yet, when there's a tie, it just goes straight to like the person with the top port priority wins. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why that so that's why yeah, core priority this matters. This is y'all the greatest fighting game ever. Yeah. Okay. Fox. 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 Hiya. All right. So that's 20XX, and this whole movement gets a bunch of people to start playing Fox, which is really bad for Hungry Box because oh, Fox counters Jigglypuff. God damn it. No, I don't know. Yeah, they sound fun. I like how you can say that with a straight face. What? Say what? <laughs> Fox counters Jigglypuff? And that, like, <laughs> this entire person's livelihood depends <laughs> on this. <laughs> no, he has a job! He has a job! He's okay. He's, okay. he's working at a paper mill. He's going to college. It's fine. Jigglypuff, while you're still Fuck off, I don't need smash. Alright. So, things are going to get even cooler, because now we're leaving the Golden Age, and we're leaving the era of the Five Gods, although there are still Five Gods. And fuck Brawl. Because, and fuck Brawl. Because two big changes happen in 2013. One is, uh... I hit puberty. Kid Icarus Uprising comes out on the 3DS. Yes. Yeah! 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 It's really good, but it has nothing to do with Smash Bros. Smash Bros. made it. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> so... Let Sakurai make more games. That's true. Why don't you have him make a, 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 a Kid Icarus game? That's true. At least port it. But 2013, a documentary comes out called The Smash Brothers that is about some of the original people who started this whole community to begin with. Uh, it gets a lot of traction, and a lot of people suddenly start paying attention to the fact that people are still playing Melee. And this is really weird to people who just were playing Brawl and their, with their brothers and beating people up with Rob. Sorry. Sounds personal. Yeah. Uh, my my brother is better than me at Smash. It <laughs> <laughs> made me really sad. I didn't even know Roland had it, bro. <laughs> so, Shout out to him, by the way. Yeah. So whatever happened to, um, what, what was it? Aizen? 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 Chuzat? Isa? Yeah, like Captain the guys who originally Some of them are still playing the game and some of them retired, but some of these people are in the documentary. I believe Ozen is, and Asai is, and Chudad is. I don't think Captain Jack is, and I don't think Ken is either. I'm not quite sure. I know, I think Mango is as well. I don't know. But anyways, that's the documentary. Also, a little mod called Project M comes out. Woo! Woo! 
Melee yeah, so good. Yo. Melee but good. Yo. Basically, yeah. people decide what if Brawl was a sequel to Melee and had all the cool shit in Melee, and everyone was balanced to be as good as Fox is in Melee. And then they make Project M. At the time, and I still believe, Project M is one of the best Smash games. Yeah. And it wasn't it made is. by Sakurai. It is. Though. It is. It kind of is. Yeah. And so a lot of people get excited because this is a really well-made mod, and it's so good that normal people are playing it. Yeah. Which is kind of I play Project which is kind of wild, isn't it? Is this known as Rivals of Aether? No. no. no Rivals of Aether comes out 2015, around here. Okay. Later on. Okay. Smash Bros. Oh. Because Brawl was so bad, it got removed from Evo, and there just wasn't a Smash game at Evo for a long Damn. ass time. So people are like, "Hey, let's have Evo in 2013 uh, in Melee. Melee at Evo, please." And the people who are organizing Evo are like, "All right, donate like ninety-seven thousand dollars to breast cancer research, and what? we'll put Melee <laughs> on, <laughs> and we'll put Melee on the front stage it's not a bad at Evo." Thing. Yeah, that's I'm not down for this. That's not, not a bad that. thing. So it's like, though. it's like, I don't know. Exactly Exactly how it worked out. There's it's just like, hey, if you if you can raise this much money for charity, you can play Melee at Evo, and then people do that. Literally raising nine. What is the exact number? Do I have it here? Ninety four thousand dollars for breast cancer research oh, to get sure. Evo to get Melee at Evo. You, did you have a question? Oh no, I was just saying hell yeah. Oh uh, like, yeah. <laughs> Except Nintendo shuts down this tournament. God damn it! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> After everyone gets upset because they literally raised money for charity to play Melee at Evo, they yeah. start yelling at Nintendo, and Nintendo eventually backs off and allows Evo 2013 to happen. I fucking, fucking hate Nintendo. <laughs> so, Sega does what Nintendo was Literally! Cool. Literally they don't. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> and so, here's the thing. At Evo, from, from this, up until this point, no one has beaten one of the five gods. To my knowledge, there might have been one match really early on in 2004 that Mewtwo King lost, and there might have been, there are some like off matches that some of them lost, but for the most pe part, these people were very dominant in their field. Yeah. And then comes along a little guy named... Just a little guy. Is it, is just it, a little guy. Actually a little guy. Is it? Is it? Wobbles. It's not who I thought it was. <laughs> Uh-oh is right. <laughs> Wobbles has been studying with the people of Ice Climbers fame. He's he's been learning like techniques with huh? Ice Climbers. You look like Wobbles. Dark do I? Needs. I do look like he's Wobbles. Been learning, right. He's been neat. learning the dark arts. <laughs> the dark with, arts. He's been learning the dark arts with Ice Climbers. And he discovers it. Well, he doesn't discover a technique. He learns this technique from, I believe it was Korean players who have been playing Smash. I forgot exactly. But he learns a technique that he dubs Wobbling. He learns it. Oh! He learns it and then he coins the name for that it. That makes so much sense. What wobbling is, is if you're an Ice Climbers player, if you're playing Ice Climbers and you grab the opponent with one of them and the other one comes in and starts doing forward tilts, you can just hold on to the opponent forever and just rack up damage. Yep. Forever. And then just pull them up to 400%, throw them up, and that's a stock. Literally, he can take a stock from a grab. Yep. He beats. Let me actually look, because he beats four of the five gods in this tournament. And this was legal. This is legal. This is legal in <laughs> tournaments. Fuck me. Okay. Uh, I forgot who he beats. I think I think Armada is the only player he doesn't beat. So he beats Mewtwo King. He beats Mango. He beats Hungrybox, and he beats PPMD. God damn. He beats all of them he beat by PPMD. wobbling. He's kicking their ass. Now, something we have not talked about is tournaments don't run... They, okay, so there's a thing called double elimination. The, I forgot the exact terminology. Double elimination tournament, double elimination bracket or whatever. Basically, if you lose one match, you get put in a loser's bracket. Yeah. And yeah. you have to go through the whole tournament in the loser's bracket. And if you lose another time, then you're eliminated. But you can go all the way to the end of the loser's bracket and fight whoever wins the winner's bracket. Yeah. And if you beat the person in the winner's bracket, then you have to, then you have to do, beat them again because you both technically lost one match. So if you're able to go through the loser's bracket and beat the winner twice, you win the tournament. It sounds like losing might be a good strategy then, because you're going to be going against the weaker players for most of the tournament. Weaker? As in the people that these people are beating? 
Yeah. The people that... Because Wobbles is beating these people, so they're going through the loser's bracket as well. Yeah. Remember that. So fucking white. And also, that you, still, <laughs> you still have to beat the winner twice. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard. And eventually, That's at terrible. the end of all of this, the winner of this tournament is... Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. oh damn it. No! 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 Mango! Mango wins! Oh, Everyone oh, pause! I was Fox rooting for Hungry Box. Rain Supreme. I was so rooting for fucking Job Man. Mango was like, yeah, <laughs> get out of here, you person with a job. Hiya, uh, yeah. that's what you get for having <laughs> a life. Job. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Okay. As long as he's employed, he can never win. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, he can't dedicate all his time to smash. So shit happened. Let me see what's important that happens uh, after this. Uh, uh, oh yeah. At, from this point on, melee will show up every year. Thank yeah! You. Melee doesn't have to raise money for charity anymore. They're just in, in How Evo. How does everyone else feel about the Smashers hanging around? <laughs> smashers. So there are some stories. <laughs> some, there's a really, People really don't funny, like, really funny meme. There are really funny memes. I think they happen later. I don't know which one you're referring to. I'm, I'm talking to the, the shower. The shower? Oh yeah, the shower. shower. What's the shower? Uh, Smash players don't shower. Oh, Smash put yeah, th this guy's really cool, but he's also really smelly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he literally dropped out of school to play Evo, and he doesn't have money to pay the water bill. He's not oh shy. Oh my god. That's not that true, I just made that up. That's oh, not like, literally he's true. He is the one that dropped out of high school though, right? He is the one that dropped out of high school. I'm gonna do an interview with him, and he's just like, you're fucking dishonest. Literally, he in a stream, he says, you know how many times I did my homework? I have more Evo with that I w did my homework. <laughs> Fuck yeah! That's right. Fuck school. All right. How is he okay now? Is he okay? I mean, he what Evo? Does he got his GED? question? He probably, he probably got his GED? He probably got like money from Evo. I don't know! That's what I would assume. Yeah, but you can't live and retire off of your Evo when I'm I mean, I'm pretty sure YouTube King's like fucking loaded with money because of his tournament wins. Uh, no. Really? No. He's he. I, I'm pretty sure he has a lot of money, but it's not from tournament wins. We will get to that. So fucking entrepreneurial. Sorry. So there, are, there, there's one more character that we need to mention that shows up. Well, he's been around for a while, but he shows up around now to any prevalence. Not really, but he's important now. Leffen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Ed. Leffen. No. Why are you a Leffen fan? Like Why do you hate oh, humans? Yeah. Pissed. So Leffen. I think Leffen is now the hottest man on the board. <laughs> He looks so angry. Leffen, shaggy. Let's go. Leffen is a Swedish player. He looks like angry Shaggy. Leffen is a Swedish player like Armada. Oh, nice. Let's talk about evidence that's it. <laughs> what is that? So, Leffen is a Fox player and My he does really good at Evo 2013, but he, I don't remember where he placed. I don't think he placed in the top eight, but he still did pretty good. In 2013, Armada makes a post on the Smash boards announcing that him and a bunch of other TOs have decided to ban Leffen from tournaments. What? what? <laughs> Why? Let's get to that because there's a lot of reasons. Like, well, we did nothing. Uh, he did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. Left. So the reasons for the tournament ban for the tournament ban include poor sportsmanship, demoralizing new players, nothing making wrong. fun of people's disabilities, oh, lying and harassing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. I've mean, done fine. something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> to prove all of these claims, Armada links a file called evidence.zip, which contains testimonies from a bunch of people who attest to his poor sportsmanship. Oh my god. I believe one of these claims was also, like, I don't remember. It was something really bad. He's that was not in beating there. these allegations. <laughs> what? He's not beating the allegations. I'm gonna look it up. What do you mean he's not beating the allegations? <laughs> he's not. He oh yeah, he tried... He basically, this gets posted on the Smash boards, and everyone's like, yeah, that makes sense. Then Lena yeah. shows up and goes, ah, haters gonna hate. <laughs> exact <laughs> words, by the way. And everyone is like, yo, why the fuck are you so sensitive? Leffen's the best player in the game, bro. Shut the fuck up. And so a bunch of Leffen fans come in and talk about how he should be in, in tournaments, and the ban was unfair, and people just hate Leffen because they're too sensitive. Oh. He gets banned, he makes an apology, and he gets back to playing tournaments a year later. What year is this? 2013. I feel like in the 2013 to like 2017 era, gamer nerd culture really liked to shelter a lot of angry and abusive people. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. 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 But not this time.
Modern Weapons banned. <laughs> and he gets back in 2014 after making that apology. So he's all good now, right, guys? He's clean. <laughs> he's clean. He doesn't do any of that stuff anymore, guys. <laughs> doesn't do any of that stuff anymore, guys. <laughs> Gamergate was in 2014. Gamergate was around yeah. 20... I thought it was around 2016. No, we were just still feeling the fallout of Gamergate. Oh, okay. It was a very slow yeah, I don't really know much thing. About it really should not have earned the title right. honorific, honorific of Gate. <laughs> so, Gamer. guys, we get a new Smash game in 2014. Woo! Smash 4. Woo! I was... Suddenly, Sakurai is like, okay, guys, I gotta admit, I fucked up this time. <laughs> but right, he did. It's the best one. <laughs> Brawl is the best one? I fucking love Brawl with my whole heart. I'm not you even got some fair But I'm also a casual enough. player, so... Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I fucking no, love no, Brawl. See, cause, cause Smash 4 was funny, because he, he made Smash to get away from the, the competitive fighting games. Yep. So then Smash 4 comes around and like, you know what? Fuck you. Here's a Shoto. Deal with it. <laughs> Here's what? what? Is it Shoto? Uh, Shoto's like a well-rounded character. Like, Reach. Like, 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 basically character of, like... Projectile, oh, because he put kick, he put Ryu in Smash. Oh he yeah, so, Smash. yeah, Street Fighter character. Like Smash. where are these inputs? Shoto, Shoto literally just refers to a well-rounded character. Yeah, yeah, but but that, that's not important. Mario's technically a Shoto. Yeah, he's also the best character Shoto, in Smash Shoto, Four. Okay. Not literally, that was a joke. I was, <laughs> but, but yeah. Okay, so Smash Four introduces something that's really important called DLC fighters. Uh -oh. Yeah, he can now that there's internet is strong enough and whatnot, he can add characters later on that he wasn't able to during development. So, he he first adds Mewtwo, and then he adds Roy and shit, and then when he adds two characters that are really... Three characters that are really important. I forgot one. Excuse me. First is Cloud. He just fucking pukes. Cloud. He like puked on the floor at this point, and we just continue like... We'll have Toast look it up. Ew! So, Cloud... Cloud is really good because he has a sword that is the size of a skyscraper. He has a sword. His down hair is literally, he rides it like a pogo stick, and it's really good. <laughs> Let me pull out, where the fuck did I put this? There it is. Like, his range is so good that this is him, and then his, like, his neutral air goes all the way over here. It's fucking insanely good. Uh, so he's really powerful. He also has this move called Limit. He's this mechanic <laughs> called Limit. Basically, if he charges down special, all of his specials become more powerful. This includes down special, which becomes a new move called Finishing Touch. Before he was patched, this was basically uh, a rest from Jigglypuff, but it was massive. <laughs> and so you could just kill people from center stage with Finishing Touch when they were like at 6%. It was really strong. Later this got nerfed, so it was closer to like 50%, so it's a little more reasonable now, but it's still pretty good. Second is a character called Corrin. Corrin. Rem <laughs> Remember when Marth and Roy were added to Smash Brothers Melee to advertise Fire Emblem? Corrin gets advertised to get to add it. Along to with Robin, whoa! So well, well his Fire game Emblem. already came out, and Robin's kind of cool, actually. Shut up, I Robin like Robin. Is cool. Robin, is, Robin is cool. Yeah. What is it advertising? It's advertising Fire Emblem Fates? Yeah, oh, Fates. Fire Emblem Fates, oh, which is like Fire oh, Emblem... Sorry. Question? Okay, so they accidentally created a great ad for Fire Emblem, so now they're making another Fire Emblem game and intentionally using this new Smash release as their main yeah. advertising for Exactly. It. Fire Emblem Fates isn't even out yet, and they're already advertising it by adding Corrin. It's kind of like everything with like, Roy and Melee. This wow. makes a lot of people upset because this takes up a slot of ca for a character that people really you deny wanted. the Scrimblow. They yeah. were denied a Scrimblow from my to this day. Too, people bro. are Where's still asking man? for Gino. They're still asking for Rayman. <laughs> These oh, characters wait, wait, that wait, haven't gotten in yet. Scrimblow. Oh yeah, this is the point where Scrimblows become a thing. So, <laughs> how do I define it? Scrimblow is a reference to a meme where someone was saying Sma well, all Smash characters want is for their Scrimbo Blimblow from the, their Scrimble favorite Blimble platformer Blimble from... Blimble Scrunko. From the popular mascot platformer they played when they were six. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so like, Scrimblo, Kazooie, yeah. fucking Glover, Rayman, yeah. Rayman. Yeah. Mario. Mario, yeah. So Scrimblo literally refers to a character from a platformer. 
Yeah. Then there's JRPG McSword Guy, which refers to a character from a JRPG who has a sword, which there's a lot of. Yeah. In fact, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't actually think there's a single character with a sword in this game that isn't from a JRPG. I might no. be wrong on that. Meta hey, Meta Knight. Meta Knight. Hit hey. Meta Knight. Yeah. But th there are some, but 90%. Yeah. JRPG. Okay. So, third character that we need to talk about is Bayonetta. Woo! Sheesh! Yes. So, um, how do I? I don't. I don't care enough to describe everything Bro, about Bayonetta. She has she, has zero to deaths. No, she what's can, the story behind Bayonetta's include. Oh yeah. She, remember when they did a little uh, thing in for melee where they're like, "Hey, what characters do you want out of this match?" Sakurai decides to do another Smash ballot where you can submit which character you want to get put in Smash, and it might get in if it gets enough votes. Unlike with Melee, it's got more than 500 people voting. In fact, it probably had like 5 billion people yeah. voting. <laughs> and I a lot of people were voting more than once. On that one. So, out of all that, he announces that Bayonetta gets in before getting the most fifth. requested character. No, 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 no. For getting fifth place in the Smash Ballot. People are a little upset, but a lot of people like Bayonetta, so it's fine. Why did the top four not get included? Six, we'll get to that. that. We'll get to that. <laughs> So, Bayonetta gets added, and basically she has zero to deaths, and she kills people really, 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 really fucking early. Really, 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 really fucking easy. Yeah. And people are like, hey, this is a little too much, okay? <laughs> <laughs> there, people are having Be Meta Knight flashbacks, this character is so strong. They're like fighting this, they're like, oh god, she's like spinning all over the place, what it's do I Marvel, do? It's Marvel, baby! It's Marvel! So a patch comes out that nerfs Bayonetta. But not really. But not really. She's still zero to deaths. <laughs> and that's where she's at right now. And that's the Smash 4 meta. That's the we've, Smash 4. We pretty much, we went really far ahead. That all happens in like 2016. But let's get over to EVO 2015. Because Melee's there and Smash 4 is there. Two, Two Smash, Smash games. games. Two games for people who don't shower. I, I, I remember that. Oh my god. <laughs> that's twice as stinky. Twice as stinky. <laughs> we could smell it from here. Oh my god. The entire and the winner. So let's let's start off real easy. The winner of Evo 2015 for Smash 4 was Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, who I know that guy. Where did he come from? Zero is a Diddy Kong player. Do you have any other story for him? I don't know. He like, didn't he start in Brawl though? I thought you were gonna. Bring he him up starts. In Brawl. He starts in Brawl and stuff, but he's not really that present until right now because literally no one plays Brawl. Remember that? Yeah. Fuck no Brawl. one played Brawl fuck except for Brawl. casual people. people. Except for Jackson. Except for normal people. I was the only one. That <laughs> and Roland's older brother. Okay. And my older brother who kicked my ass all the like time. 10. I didn't give a shit. She was really good with Meta Knight. <laughs> <laughs> so zero. He plays Diddy Kong in Smash 4, yeah. and this is a big deal because before Bayonetta comes out, Diddy Kong is considered the best character in the game because he can down throw you and then he can up air you, and then sometimes he can do two up airs in a row. This is called a hoo ha, and it gets its name because <laughs> because someone yelled this at Hungrybox while he was losing a match at Paragon. Hoo ha! What was that? That's what my grandmother calls a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh god, we're gonna run out of space on the board, but That's there are some so more funny. important people in Smash 4 besides Zero. We're gonna get to a That's point, so this is, we're getting to a point where because there's so many characters in here, Sakurai is adding like very like niche mechanics to them to make them stronger. Yeah. And so characters are going to get very technical from now on. And so people who specialize in them are going to become experts in their field. UFOlogy, yes, it's all real. Ooh. <laughs> Cut. We get people like Nairo. Uh, and oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Nairo is a zero suit player, right? I don't fucking know. Okay, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's a zero suit player. <laughs> I, don't fucking know. I did not do that much research into Smash 4. I'm just relying on because this was the point when I started getting into competitive Smash. Oh, yeah. So this is from memory. Ally oh, is a Mario player, and he's yuck. really he oh, just no, looks no. like Mario in real life. What do you mean yuck? A lot. <laughs> Is he uh, is he ugly or do you refer to future events? You know what I'm talking. About. He looks like Dick Masterson. <laughs> Dick that is, Masterson. he kind of does. My boy. Tweak is a Bowser Junior player. A woman? No, that's a guy. Oh. <laughs> the Buzz I got excited. Is a Rosalina and Luma player? Yo, they looked at the dude from Y2K. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't don't dog on man. The Buzz. The Buzz is really fucking cool. He does. He has. He has. He has the, the the strive, he has the power, he puts into work, he puts into hours, he eats, he devours. Wait, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! 
Esam is a Pikachu player. No, Whoa. It's, the, it's the fucking the blacksmith. And uh, Gimmer is uh, another blacksmith. A uh, 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 <laughs> Game and Watch player. He has a big face. <laughs> When you ball for Imagine if, like all these people genuinely just like look like this. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried, guys. He Please leave me so happy. Gimmer, look, Gimmer's really cool. He wears like a he wears a hoodie a lot, and he looks really cool in the hoodie. Oh my god! So no, he's like edgy Smash really player. Cool. I guess I don't know. <laughs> edgy Smash player. Oh, by the way, Jigglypuff sucks in Smash Four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jigglypuff's like the worst character in the game, and yeah. Box is suffering, and he's like, "Bring me back to melee." <laughs> Whatever this shitty ass game. So let's go back to melee for a second. So, mmm, uh, during some earlier tournaments that uh, is not that important. Uh, Hungry Box loses to both Mango and Armada. Armada is now learning Fox specifically to counter Hungry Box. Where's, where's Armada? There he is. Armada's learning Fox specifically to counter Hungry Box, and Hungry Box is really fucking struggling because in one game he's getting dogged by Fox, and the other game he's getting dogged by everyone because his character sucks. <laughs> he's like, "What do I do?" Why doesn't he just play a different character in Smash Four? He has. A, he should pick up there's, Sonic. Shush. There's some weird. There's some stuff behind this. I'm not really sure, but there might be like an emotional attachment to Jigglypuff that he has. Oh, but that's cute. Yeah, like, like in a cute way, right? Like, he, he, like Jigglypuff is a spirit animal, essentially. Oh my he has, god, yes. his stand is Jigglypuff. Are the same characters allowed to fight each other, or do they have to be two different characters? Yeah, you can have, these are called ditto matches, where two characters fight each other that are the same character, that's allowed. So sometimes, uh, like, Hungrybox will fight another Jigglypuff player or something. And a lot of times, it's two Fox players. Oh Fox my Fox god. <laughs> that's where the that's where the double fox final destination no, no items bullshit come, meme comes from. Smash because, Brothers. Because at the because people didn't get why people played melee with no items on, so they would make that joke all the time. Yeah. Okay. So after losing to Armada and uh fucking Mango, Hungry Box decides to to start training. Goes through a bit of a training arc and he gets a coach named Captain Crunch. Crunch is another Jigglypuff player who's been talking about the Fox matchup with Hungrybox and trying to figure out how to beat it. And so he's discussing this with Hungrybox, and they're trying to figure out how to beat Mango in EVO 2015. And Hungrybox does! Hell Mango yeah. is no longer the best character in Smash. What? Now Hungrybox has to beat Armada, and the winner of that match is Armada! Whoa! Hungrybox is really dispirited by this, Dude. but he starts training again. Armada is now the Hungry only one of the up. five gods that hung <laughs> that Hungrybox has not defeated. Cloud. Cloud. <laughs> Armada is now the last of the five gods that Hungrybox hasn't Bro, I was and Later on, Armada or Hungrybox beats Armada. So now Hungrybox is going through his training arc. Now that he's beaten all five gods, he knows he can do this. He knows he can become the best player in Smash. Yeah. Meanwhile, Zero is the best player in Smash 4, and he goes on a 56 tournament win streak Holy because shit. of how fucking good he is at that game. How frequent are you? Ban him. Like, there's multiple a year. I'm specifically referring to majors where, like, 100 plus people are entering. Yeah, how many, like, a year? There's not an exact number, but, like, like 50, maybe? So, he just had, like, a good year and a half. He had a really good Trap. year. All over the fucking country just yeah, jogging. He, literally, people. actually, yeah. what happens? My god, actual oh, Jesus. <laughs> is he making significant money off of these, or is he just... We might get to that. I might remember to yeah, get to that. Yeah, what are, like, that. the prize pools for these tournaments? We might, uh, you know what? We can talk about that right now. Uh, not very much. Uh... I believe Ken, in his whole career, made like thirty-five thousand dollars off of his tournament winnings. Damn, off his, whole, off his, off his whole career, career like, thirty-five thousand dollars, which is like several years. Like you can't like, even pay for a semester of law school in that. <laughs> yeah, I believe other players have made like a hundred plus, but only like the best. And I think Zero in his whole career wins like hundred fifty k, and he wins like every tournament this year. Yeah. And he goes on to play Smash until 2020, which we'll get to. Oopsie. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, fuck. Uh -oh. Fuck me. Fuck me. All right. All right. Here's, we're going to do a little branch path. Do you guys want to talk about Apex 2015? Sure. 
<laughs> We're having a moment, sorry. <laughs> So All right, Apex 2015. I'm gonna go over this very briefly because it's not that important, but it's yeah. basically the worst tournament in Smash history. Nice. They go to people start going to the tournament and they realize that it's being hosted in like a hotel lobby, right? Oh, or not a hotel lobby, but like in the ballroom of a hotel, wherever the like tournament. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That you know the air. It's a big. It's a about. big room. Like in a big ass room, yeah. and they go over there and they realize the roof of the garage, the the parking garage, has caved in. So no one's allowed to park in there. What? what? <laughs> like the day before, the parking garage's roof just fucking collapsed. <laughs> Fuck. Welcome to Evo, everybody. Welcome, Welcome to Apex. Actually. Welcome to Apex. <laughs> Apex was one of the other like big major tournaments that was going on yearly since like 2011, 10, or something like that. Big tournament. So a lot of people are coming here. And there's no parking space, so a lot of people just start parking on the fire lane. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no! <laughs> so, people go in, and they also, the tournament organizers realize that there's a lot more people here than are supposed to be in a building. Oh god, it's <laughs> fucking Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> and so eventually, like, also the hotel is really fucking moldy for some reason. What? <laughs> what the fuck is this place? <laughs> they like, they like walked into hell real quick. It's perfect for Smash players. Perfect for Smash players. He's, he's getting it. It's a motel on the side of the road. Like, <laughs> so they go to this, they go to this fucking motel, right? And they're starting to set up, they're starting to set up the tournament. People are bringing, people have flown across the world with CTV televisions. Smash just be like, <laughs> them over here. They brought their whole <laughs> fucking Masters game to you. <laughs> Masters be like, I know a venue, and then they take you to the <laughs> No, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so basically, after all this, while they're setting up the tournament, the police come in and are like, Yo, you can't fucking do this. The police. The fucking police come in so and are like, laws. you can't do this. And the attitude at the time was like, I'm running a tournament, bro. <laughs> Fuck the police. I'm running a tournament. Three stock me. So they got arrested, right? We'll leave if you win. They eventually they're forced to listen, but the attitude was like, "Fuck you." All right. They should have challenged the police to a smash battle. <laughs> they should have challenged it to a one v one. Oh my! <laughs> it was easy, but no. Uh, so now they have to re. Okay. They have to move everything to another venue and find a venue on this day. They find another venue oh that's like God. 40 miles away or something Holy like shit. that. And they're like, okay, we got to move like a thousand CTVs over here and a thousand smash setups. Oh my God. And so eventually the community comes around and they actually pull it off. What? That, that's not what I expected. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but this all happens on Friday and essentially by the time they're done setting up the tournament, everyone's going to bed. So they lost a day of the tournament. They now have to run three days worth of tournaments, or three days worth of matches in two days. Fuck. At the end, the tournament ended at 3 a.m. on Monday. And that's Apex 2015! Hell yeah! I literally don't remember who won. Maybe it was Zero. <laughs> was he there? I think he was, yeah. yeah he My probably won. God. He probably won. Fucking horror stories. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Apex 2015, everyone. I didn't even hear about that. That's so funny. That's fucking hilarious. Okay. That's why we're 2016 the rolls around. We're be like Murphy's Law. PPMD <laughs> won. PPMD won what? Apex 2015. PPMD won? <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh my man! Oh. Hell yeah, my man PP! Go to Dr. PP! No. Dr. PP, please pet my dick! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. Thank, thank you for the That's last minute research. <laughs> so, we gotta talk about EVO 2016, because this is literally the biggest tournament in Smash Melee, at least, Melee history. There are 2,300 entrants this year. Fuck. Man. And Hungry Box is coming in, and Armada's coming in, all of the Five Gods are coming in. They're all and coming. They're all coming, and they're coming for Hungry Box. They're like, bro, you're gonna, you're gonna die. You're gonna lose your little Jigglypuff, man. You suck, bro. Jigglypuff sucks. People don't like Hungry Box, by the way. In case I haven't made that clear. Yeah, fuck Hungry Box. He has a job. So he has a he has a job, and he plays a slow character. Fuck him, right? So, I love Hungry Box. Hungry Box is playing in set, right? There's there's a very important story. If you follow Hungry Box at this tournament, there's a very like. Fucking insane story. So Hungrybox is in winner's bracket, and then he gets brought down by Plop. 
<laughs> what a fucking stupid ass name. <laughs> Plup is Plup, 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 Plup is a chic slash fox player, and he kicks Hungrybox's ass no. and pulls him down to the losers bracket. No. And at this point, Hungrybox has almost sacrificed the entire tournament. He's not even thinking of playing losers bracket. He's thinking about going home. And then cool his guy. coach comes in, Captain Crunch, and is like, "Hey, bro." Captain he Crunch. Captain Crunch comes in and is like, "Hey." There's still melee left to play, and eventually gets Hungry Box out of his defeatist mindset and gets him back into the game. There's still melee left to play. There's still some melee left to play. <laughs> melee. It's I so love this anime melee. level intensity for fucking Super Smash Brothers. I yes, know, Hungry so Box is a real world anime protagonist, <laughs> and if you follow this, you're going to see his arc. He's about to do the he's about to do the fucking Chimera Ant arc in one day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Hungry Box. Hungry Box decides. Hungry Box gets out of his defeatist mindset, gets back into the bracket, and his next match, or some matches later, he has to fight Mango, his old rival, and he beats Mango. Then he has to beat Plup. Plup, the person who brought him down to the bracket, now back to fight him. And pl and. <laughs> Not out of Box wins. He wins. <laughs> yes! He what? And then he goes all the way to Grand Finals, where he has to fight Armada. Oh no. Oh fuck me. <laughs> His rival, who's literally learning Fox just to beat him. <laughs> fuck. Fuck Hungry Box. Fuck Hungry Box in particular. So let's <laughs> let's go through every set they play. Set one happens, and Armada wins. Set two happens, and Hungry Box wins. Set three, Armada wins. Set four, Hungry Box wins. They're now at match set. Whoever wins this either wins Evo or resets the bracket, right? Resets the bracket. Resets the bracket because it's losers. He's in losers bracket, so he has oh. to beat him once for a double elimination. Oh, okay, okay. He has to win twice. Yeah, yeah he has to win twice. Okay. So. Hungry Box is fighting Armada, who's playing Fox, and Armada does an up throw on his Jigglypuff at kill percentage. Hungry Box has a true. Is everyone okay? Yeah, what yeah, happened? What are you saying? With no more sidebars, okay? Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> Armada throw up, throws Hungry Box up in the air. Fox has a kill move he can do that's to confirm after this. So Hungry Box is going to lose the tournament. So he jumps up in the air, he hits him with his up air, and Jigglypuff gets hit by the up air, but he doesn't go flying. He does take damage, he doesn't go anywhere. And he continues playing and he wins the set. Literally oh. everyone made that face. What? That, <laughs> that didn't go anywhere where I thought it was, I thought it was gonna lose. What <laughs> fucking go! Losing it. No, I just hungry like, box. Hungry box. Yeah. How the fuck did hungry box not lose that? You know yeah, what happened? So he used. Stop. Put, turn off the music. <laughs> My ears. So, this is what is known as a phantom hitbox. If you hit an opponent with a move and the hitboxes are like touching but not overlapping, the game doesn't calculate the knockback for the move, and you take the damage, but you don't go anywhere. You oh. don't take any hit stun, you do nothing happens. And this is why when Armada up aired Hungrybox, it was literally a one in a million event where Hungrybox pulled through in the <laughs> end. Okay, thing I didn't know about until after this lecture, but Phantom hitboxes aren't a glitch. Um... There's actually a value in the game that determines how big the margins for uh, what we call a phantom hitbox is. And it turns out that it was an intentional mechanic in the game that's also in Brawl and got removed later because people thought it was a bug. Uh, it got the official name Glancing Blows in the Brawl game manual. And again, I didn't know about this until Awesome Sauce talked about it on his YouTube channel. Uh, so shout outs to him. But... Yeah, glancing blows are an intended mechanic, and this is not a glitch. Um, so, sorry to disappoint. Or, you're welcome if for the information, the more correct information that I have given you. This was literally a miracle that happened live on stage. Literal anime protagonist! He's fighting fucking...
fucking Burem right now or some shit. I don't know. Name an anime. He's this fighting the main villain. He is fighting fucking Dio right now. What it's going crazy. Fuck? We have the same type of hitbox. <laughs> But okay, okay. He resets the bracket by doing that. Now he has to beat Armada again. God damn it, make it over! Hungrybox collects himself, and the matches go as follows Armada wins match one, Hungrybox wins match two, Armada wins match three, Hungrybox wins match four, Hungrybox wins match five. Let's oh, yeah, yeah. Hungrybox literally falls on the ground crying after this momentous occasion. He is literally so struck by the fact that he won EVO 2016. The commentators pull him up to commentate on his victory and he begins crying again. Saying that his dad told him he was never going to be the best and he just proved he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't think I was gonna be this emotionally invested. I wanna, I wanna search up the interview of him crying. I heard his father said what? His father what said, you're good at melee, but you'll never be the best. His father told him to get you're a not job. A true smash and he did have a job, but he still became the best. Fuck he that. He showed fuck. him. Fuck our mom. With his Jigglypuff. Fuck Evo, fuck With his everyone. Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff sucks, son. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but a sad Fox player, God. Literally after his tournament win, people are online complaining because he sucks. Because Jigglypuff sucks. <laughs> 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 now that he's beaten Armada, he has a new rival, and that is where the fuck did I put him? The fuck, Leffen. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh, oh. Leffen. Yeah. We're about to enter the Leffen saga, featuring this asshole. Like when remember, remember when he was banned from tournaments for harassing people? Now Leffen wants to become the best in Smash, and uh, this is the guy in his way! Imagine like he becomes the protagonist of one big story arc. <laughs> Leffen's like the antagonist of Smash. Yeah. Leffen is the antagonist. I still haven't finished reading the fucking document. Woo! Alright. This starts the Leffen saga, and some big stuff happens. One is, in 2016, PPMD retires from Smash for no. medical reasons. Oh. Yeah, because that shit fucks up your hands, bro. You think L canceling is natural? <laughs> <laughs> you think the human body is supposed to wait fucking that? Hunter Hunter himself. It's okay, a, okay. It's kind of ironic, though, that the doctor retired for medical reasons. Yeah, he retires for medical reasons. Is he an actual doctor, though? No. no. What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> people have, like, hot All right. shit. Armada later retires in 2018 because he stops finding the game fun. Mewtwo King stops playing competitively because he finds a lot more invest- he finds there's gonna be a lot more potential for him if he starts doing, like, live streaming and stuff. And so he becomes, like, a live streamer, he writes a book, he stops playing Melee and becomes sort of like, like a mentor figure in the community. Yeah. Mango stops winning tournaments in 2018, Mango. and he just sort of starts fading away. This means Hungrybox is the last of the five gods still playing this game. And because of that, Leffen needs to beat a god to become the best in Smash. Yeah. And yeah, Leffen doesn't team. even think hung Leffen thinks Hungrybox is a false god. And <laughs> <laughs> a false god. <laughs> he will like we're gonna get to it later. He does not like Hungrybox. My main character for real. <laughs> so remember, remember 20XX? Wait, Eleven? Yeah, 20XX. Like Edward Elric bag? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Leffen proposes the Puff Doomsday Theory as a counter theory oh to 20XX. Because Le Puff is so easy to play, no one's going to play like Fox because Puff is much stronger and much easier to play. And so the whole community will be dominated by Puff players. So the thing about that is Hungrybox is the only Puff player within the top 40. Yeah. <laughs> there are no other Puff players. Actual the only Puff. other Puff player is a guy named Michael. He's ranked 41! It's literally Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but we'll get to that. It's fucking Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> so, when this gets brought up to Leffen, Leffen responds that the reason people don't play Puff is because Puff is so boring to play. Which means he, the, the, the Puff Doomsday Theory isn't true, because no one wants to play Puff, so no one's going to play Puff, so Puff isn't going to dominate the meta. Right? 
Everyone on board with that? Yeah. I Left feel like the idiot. critiquing this with facts and logic is completely missing the point. <laughs> Puff's Puff Doomsday. Puff Doomsday theory? Yeah. It's the theory that Jigglypuff is going to dominate the meta of Smash Brothers. Okay. <laughs> this one guy is just salty that this other guy won a tournament, so now he's like, oh, Puff players are gonna ruin the game. Uh, bitch yeah. Bitch behavior. Yeah. Bitch behavior, yeah. Bitch behavior. So after this, Leffen starts a smear campaign against Hungrybox. Oh, fuck. He makes a video called One of the Many Reasons to Hate Hungrybox, where he brings on one of his friends to tell stories about Hungrybox and how bad he is. Hungrybox, Hungrybox is, is so bad that he doesn't even know what crouch canceling is what the fuck is wrong with him? He won. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So it turns out that like his friend came out later and said all of these stories were made up. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. So Levin's just fucking really, fun. really fucking mad. It's all luck. And we'll get to how mad all he is. Literally molding. It's me playing multi All right. <laughs> Stay mad, kid. <laughs> let's let's go on a quick aside. Because right now we're in the Leffen saga. Leffen's just sort of molding in the corner. We'll leave him there. We'll let him bake for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> let him cook. Let him cook. I'm gonna cry. Cooking so long, this shit burns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wobbling. Let's talk about wobbling because shit's been going on with wobbling in melee this whole time, right? Because people are discussing whether or not wobbling should be banned, and the, the argument is it's literally a zero to death. Please ban it. And the pro wobbling side is, but ICs aren't even that good, and it's really, really funny. <laughs> it's funny. It is pretty funny. At one point, a player called Nun gets wobbled in a tournament, and while he's getting wobbled, he pulls out his phone and tweets, "I'm getting in my wobbled in my favorite game. Help me." Or something along those lines. He tweets this mid set while he's being wobbled. Wait, Guys, what? None. There's Literally. nothing he can do. <laughs> He's get, I'm getting him wobbled in my favorite game. Help me. <laughs> oh my god. So, there's a big storm around whether or not wobbling should be legal. Ice Climbers aren't even the best character in the game, so why should they be illegalized? One tournament decides to ban wobbling. <laughs> I found the tweet. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm getting wobbled in my favorite game. What do I do? <laughs> so they grab him higher. <laughs> grab him higher. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> so, sitting there like... It's like the fucking Homer Simpson chokes. Just so, the same controllers. Just one tournament there. decides to ban wobbling, and it's called Don't Park on the Grass 2014 or something like that. Uh, how, it took, how, why did it take so fucking long? Because like, it's really, really funny, and Ice Climbers aren't it even is, that good. Like, it's so broken. <laughs> like, you can just win. Let's so... <laughs> Wobbling is banned in this tournament, and another well, Icy's player named Bananas is really upset about this. <laughs> bananas. This is Bananas. Oh, bananas no. is an Icy's player, and he's not happy that it's banned. So he decides to come up with an idea. Play different characters. Ice <laughs> no. <laughs> Icy's worst matchup is against Puff, and without wobbling, he doesn't think he can beat Puff at all. Michael is a Puff player who's also in this tournament, and so Bananas comes up with an idea. I will enter this, at the beginning of this set, I will sit here and do nothing. This will mean that Michael, a defensive player, will also sit here and do nothing. We will sit here and do nothing for three sets until we get disqualified or a T.O. comes in to interrupt our match. I remember that. <laughs> that shit was fucked. Wait, they why does he there. want this? Wait, what? Why does he want both of them to get eliminated? What does he gain? Either Michael gets banned from the tur or Michael gets disqualified from the tournament because he's a Jigglypuff player and we don't like Jigglypuff players, or he's forced to play and he has to approach ice climbers. And that's a really bad thing for Jigglypuff to do. So, so this is a a hate crime? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> <laughs> You can just stop playing Jigglypuff, guys. Stop. Don't do that anymore. It's so, time to stop. People are, by the way, people are recording this match where yeah. they're standing here and doing nothing. People are, people have their phones out and it's filling up because of how much footage is on the phone. People are tired of holding their phone up, so they're tying it to their legs to film the whole wait, match. Wait, that reminds me of like this one clip of like. It was like a tournament for like Samurai Showdown, this, this other <laughs> fighting game, unrelated. But like, it has, 
out, like, so the two guys, they're going at it for a bit, and then all of a sudden they just stop, and they're staring at each other, and the commentator's going on, like, oh, whoa, this is some intense mind game, you guys. This is insane. See, this is what I love about Samurai Showdown. And then, like, oh, wait, his controller was this thing? <laughs> So yeah, eventually they stand here for like a 16, 24 minutes straight of just doing nothing and people filming them doing nothing. And they're all loving it. Like we have to put, come up with a new rule for this hack. So a tournament organizer walks in and says, hey, we're going to do a one, like we're going to do one more match and you guys have to play or you're both disqualified. And so Michael's like, okay. And he wins the set against bananas anyways. Hell yeah. What? <laughs> Michaels will continue in tournament. Bananas is out. Michaels what, loses what against fucking... some other player, but he does pretty good either way. What a waste of fucking time. <laughs> That's oh how long was this like entire experience? Like half an hour. Oh my god. I'll just sit in these motherfuckers, <laughs> sit in the chair and do nothing. <laughs> I fucking hate this game. <laughs> from that point on, Wobbling was banned from all tournaments. I love Andy yeah, Warhol's Wobble. Empire. People were really upset about this because Wobbling is really funny. So two memes come of this. One is Let's Go Army. Let's Go Army is cheering on people whenever they wobble someone. You, And then Skill Zone is whenever someone wobbles someone, you point, you like do a little circle around their controller and just with an arrow write Skill Zone. And it's like... <laughs> That's still How do you do that? <laughs> it's like for videos, memes. Oh, okay. Memes. Me All right. right. Memes. Memes. Okay. Well, while Leffen's still molding, we're going to talk about another <laughs> side. We're going to talk about the box. <laughs> the box. By the last so remember, So remember when PPMD Our retired from medical complications? <laughs> Remember when PPMD retired from medical complications? Did he die or something? No, he didn't die. Oh, okay, He's cool. still alive. That's good. But Hax retires as well. No, you remember Hax. that? Remember, yeah, the, remember that Frame Perfect guy head. that taps his shit? Yeah. <laughs> he gets a calcified FCU tendon and cannot play in tournaments anymore. Damn. I don't know what that is, but that sucks. Bad. <laughs> nice tendons in there. Bad. <laughs> Must have got calcified. He hurt that his shit. body playing Smash. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine, just imagine just fucking just literally Hunter Hunter so, himself. Hax is, <laughs> so Hax is really d bummed down by this because he's a big fan of Smash Brothers and he plays it a lot and he's really good at it and now he can't play it anymore. What a shame. Meanwhile, a controller comes out around this time called Smashbox. And so I don't actually know if I got this wrong or not, but I believe I got the Smashbox mixed up with the Hitbox. They're very similar controllers. I think the hitbox came out first. And the hitbox is more notorious because in the more traditional fighting game community, uh, it allows you to block in both directions by holding both the left and the right. Um, I don't know which controller specifically that Hax was interested in, but um, I just figured I'd add this addendum that it might not be the Smashbox, it might be the hitbox. And the community has some questions. The Smash Box is basically an arcade stick for Smash Brothers. It's a lesser hitbox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> basically, instead of having an arcade stick, you have four buttons for movement. And this means you can put in a perfect left or right input really fucking fast. Instantly, as a matter of fact. Oh. <laughs> Hax looks at this and is like, oh, 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 it's good, but I could do better. What? And Hax starts making his own fucking controller. <laughs> I'm gonna beat everyone with and my own shit. He makes, he finishes it and releases it in 2017, and it's called The Box. When you buy this controller, it comes with a 30-page manual explaining how it works. <laughs> Do you need oh my to God. read this manual? You do, not you do not need to read this manual. Did he patent it? What? Did he like patent this and sell it? Uh, I think like so. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He patented and sold this this uh, controller. That's crazy. Now, the thing about the box is that it was specifically designed so that you could play Melee without breaking your fucking hands. That's good. That's good. That is, a, that is a box. box. That's the, the box. hitbox. That's not the box. Oh, okay. It says hitbox on the side. Yeah. The box is just all black. 
Yeah, August. I, I don't believe you. You just looked up the box. The box smash controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look it but up, it's B zero X X. Is how it's spelled. Thumbs up. Zero. Okay. Cut. So, Go. Almost wrong. So, <laughs> as a testament, <laughs> shut up. As a testament to how, as a testament to how well made the box is. Hex would describe later in a video that he designed the box to take into account the anatomy of the hand, specifically the fact that if you move your middle finger, your ring finger moves as well, because the two fingers are connected. So he took this into account and made the button placement so that you could keyboard your hand correctly with them working together. <laughs> This is how in-depth he went for making this controller. He took into account human fucking anatomy, which Sap right didn't even do. Yeah, I don't think anyone fucking did that ever for any game controller. Except maybe that one for the Xbox, the with the, whatever it is, the hippo. <laughs> the hippo. The Xbox one with the, the hippo. The so, disability controller. Actually, I happen to know this. Um, the reason a lot of games have the joystick that moves in eight directions, because that's the number that the human brain can handle. Without like putting extra load on so it. You're, so, you're, or, so are you saying like ten directional joysticks are possible? They're possible, yeah, but they increase the mental difficulty. Just, so if you want to make a moment no. in the game feel more intense, if you add more than eight directions you have to memorize, it'll start like taking mental fatigue on you. So they do pay attention to biology and psychology wait, when they design wait. these consoles. Hey, wait. come on! Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that joysticks. Cannot move in 360 degrees. Wouldn't that just be a No, they ball? can. When you're trying to memorize, like, move up, move diagonal right, move left, because you're binding each one of those directions to a different thing it's in It's like game. left, diagonal, okay. left. There's little, like, I'm rivets in the I'm thinking of controller. RPGs. Okay. You are talking about okay. a very different game. Can we please get back to the lecture? Because <laughs> we have, like, we, have, we still have to get through this, guys! So, Leffen is like, oh man, this controller fucking sucks, am I right, guys? <laughs> Look at how bad this button placement is! I can make it better by modding the controller! Why and then he, uh, he makes this- asshole. He's like, hey, he's I know exactly how to do this tech better than the guy who fucking invented it can! And Hex in it later is like, what the fuck? Wait, and does so Leffen have any background in engineering at all? No. I mean, I don't know if Hax does either, to be honest. <laughs> no, Leffen does not. He <laughs> plays Smash <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> taking guesses. <laughs> point at the one person on this page who has any experts in engineering. Now point at the one person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Let's go. Job, man. Job. Yo, job, man. Let's go. So, uh, I'm trying to remember. Basically, Leffen has a big community behind him, so when he's talking about, like, hey, this controller sucks. A lot of people are like, yeah, it does suck. <laughs> and this is really hurting Hacks' sales on this controller because this is now what he's doing for a living. Oh my god. Hacks is still alright, I think, but. <laughs> that's the, that's pretty much the end of the that, that's the pretty much the end of that aside. Oh! I think we have one more before we get back to the main shit, and that's DreamHack 2017. What's that? Like, DreamHack. What's like DreamHack? Hack? No, DreamHack. Okay, one word. DreamHack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I keep looking at myself in the mirror instead of people. I don't know why. Narcissism. <laughs> Narcissism, no! I'm literally doing it wherever I look! Weapon tree. <laughs> Unironically. <laughs> so I mean, you gotta be a little narcissistic to want to give a three hour long lecture. A little bit, yeah, you're right. A man. little bit, Just maybe. Little. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> guys! Lefty. Guys, Stream Hack 2017! Before Armada retired, he was still doing tournaments, and he entered a tournament called Dream Hack 2017. But before the tournament happened, he dropped out because he couldn't get a controller that was working. Or rather, he couldn't get a controller that wasn't working. Whoa. You see, there's like a one in like a one percent chance that when you buy a GameCube controller, we it's got broken. Shinies out here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Basically, there's a thing in most controllers called snapback, where when you pull all the way to the left of the joystick it will, and you release it, it will go to the right before going to neutral. And this is really bad if you're trying to do very precise tech. But 1% of GameCube controllers are technically malfunctioning in that they don't have any snapback on it. This makes doing tech a lot easier, but also these controllers are broken, so there's not a lot of them, and they're very hard to come by and very expensive. So shinies. 
Are my I don't what the fuck you mean shinies? Like okay, Pokemon. 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 Shinies. Okay, I thought because like you know shine. No, no, no. Yeah, I was getting confused. We're doing a competitive Smash lecture. I like how over the course of the lecture, the, the paper has just been getting bent. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you fucked Fox up! Free him! No! <laughs> Free him! Yeah. Oh. Alright, alright. Armada drops out of this tournament, and this is such a big event that it makes, like, mainstream news headlines. What? Like, mainstream? How like, mainstream? Like, Vox is reporting on it. Uh, oh. <laughs> this just in, in the recent Smash tournament. <laughs> talk about, like, like, CNN. Right. <laughs> not <laughs> CNN, I would but, like, myself. but, like, rooters and shit. Not just a video Video game reporters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so oh, people get word of this and are like, "The fuck, you guys are still playing Melee? Yeah. <laughs> Not only are you still playing Melee and you're using glitches to play the game, but now you need your controllers to be malfunctioning or you won't play at all. What the fuck are you doing?" Ah, uh, yes. This becomes a big complaint of a lot of people who hate Melee. Woo! <laughs> yeah, fuck Melee. Fuck Melee. melee. I like Melee, shut up. It's really fun to watch, guys. Trust melee me. fan excited to play Melee for the first time? That's actually kind of true. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't play Melee until yesterday. <laughs> Wait, how do you have a main? Yeah! I, I started playing! Sense. It's the only character I played yesterday, and I'm really. I'm, I'm manageable with him. Wait, who? Marth. Oh. Hell yeah. Awesome. Alright. Along with this, remember how people from the fighting game community don't like Smash Brothers? Yeah! New weaponry! Let's go! Fuck you, Armada! Fuck you, Smash community! Y'all need to break your controllers to play the game, you suck! <laughs> <laughs> now, to be honest, Melee, the Melee community is kind of been a dick. So, I, I've only ever heard this story once from a friend, and I don't know if it's true, but apparently at EVO, they were doing a Guilty Gear tournament, and afterwards they were doing a Melee tournament. But the Guilty Gear tournament was going on longer than it was expected to, so Melee fans started pulling into the audience, oh. expecting oh. to see Melee being played, and saw some stupid fucking game where, like, a Who's doctor- old dude? Come! <laughs> What is FOSS, bro? <laughs> so they pull in and they start booing the people playing in the tournament. And yeah, that's not fucking cool. Don't do that. It's not fucking what the cool. Fuck? Bro. You don't yeah. disrespect Guilty Gear. Wait, yeah. which one was it? XR? Or... Uh, it was, I believe it was Guilty. Ref 2. I, I know it was XR, one of the XRs. Yeah. Watch the Guilty Gear lecture we didn't do. <laughs> watch the Guilty Gear lecture by bro procrastinators. And then watch the Wooly vs. Guilty Gear shit. And then watch Monsters Inc. It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah! yeah, yeah. yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, new Monster High movie in the works. Fuck off. By the way, okay. I'm going to bathroom. Alright, 2018, guys. <laughs> Ultimate comes out. Wait! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Me and Roland left school and went straight to GameStop to pick it up. Oh my Literally, God, at the, when, when the I game, the it. day the game came out, when we were done with school, we went straight to GameStop went to, to pick it up. Went to Pi Five and then went <laughs> home. And, I was like, and then I played the game and it was mid. And then I played the game and I was like, damn, Incineroar though. <laughs> I remember so, learning this game. So here's the thing. I played Smash 4 throughout my entire high school career. I played Smash 4 a lot and I got really emotionally attached to it. I was a Rob main. Back when Rob mains were rare. I Wait, is that the thing we played at that one birthday party? Ultimate was, yes. Okay. So, I was a Rob main. Sonic main. Woo. He was a Sonic main. And the thing about Rob is that in Smash 4 and Brawl, I don't know much about Brawl, but in Smash 4, he was a mid-tier, and he was really obscure, and no one knew how to play him, except for me. Oh. I figured him out, and I, was, <laughs> and, I, and I was so good at Rob that I entered tournaments and placed, like, 7th or something. What tournaments did you enter? Local tournaments! Local tournaments. Woo. Local tournaments being held at my school! Yeah! <laughs> I won a doubles tournament with that guy! Yeah! He carried the whole fucking team! <laughs> so yeah, when Ultimate comes around, Rob is now one of the best characters in the game. He Because he has a spin move that kills really early. He does kill really fucking early. That is his best trait. 
A lot of people talk about how reliable and good Rob is, and for the most part, they're correct. But spinning a lot and killing really early is a very strong trait that Rob has. You and if you're not... That trait. Sonic. No. Incineroar. Yeah! <laughs> Demerit. <laughs> That but throwback. if you're not playing Rob, if you're playing Rob and you're not using side B to kill, you're not playing Rob correctly in Ultimate. And that's a problem that we come to. Ultimate, when it launches, has like 80 fucking characters <laughs> yeah. in it. And there's, there's Sora's in this fucking game for some reason. No, there are wait, Disney wait, characters in this up, game. build up to the Sora reveal, Okay, fine. Shut the fuck up. Oh is it because my... she's in Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy is Nintendo adjacent? You're absolutely wrong on everything you just said and we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> you said she and I was like, stop. <laughs> Jackson, so Jackson just texted me from the bathroom saying, "Yeah, Sora." <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk a bit about Ultimate because you're right. We do need to build up a little bit. Ultimate comes out, and it, every character throughout all of Smash Everyone history is, is included. Everyone is here. That was a selling. And point. then they add new characters on top of that. Inkling, uh, 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 Ken, the, uh, 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 the Belmonts, uh, 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 some furry, I think. <laughs> And so Piranha Plant was the 69th character added to Smash, and it was And terrible. the 70th character was a DLC character called Piranha Plant. <laughs> and Piranha Plant's mid. Yeah. Then we get Joker from Persona 5, and everyone loses their fucking minds. The gates are open. The gates are fucking open. Sakurai's literally adding his favorite characters to this Pandora's game now. Box. It's now Pandora's Fire. So, the second <laughs> DLC character comes out. It's the Dragon Quest guy, I, the hero. He doesn't even have what? a real fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> what? The fucking laser disc game? What? What? Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. What are you talking about? The one with like the glowing arrows above you. No, you no, that's Dragon Dragon's Lair. Lair. Oh. To Merit. God damn it. God, can you fucking imagine the <laughs> Okay, we gotta get to the third character that gets added in. Yuck, it's Banjo Kazooie. Let's go. Literally, when this happened, I screamed and ran out of my house. Still screaming. Hey, you know what's really funny about these new characters? So, uh, whenever. So, back when they were still adding new characters to Ultimate, Sakurai would have, like, these special presentations he put together where he goes over, like, detailed history of the character, the games they're from, the inspirations for their moves and stuff. He was like, essentially writing a love letter to each character yeah. and then explaining how their moveset like, related Like, for Terry, to them. he took, like, 10 minutes going over, like, his moveset and motion controls. His so, motion inputs. Because Terry was he from King of Fighters. The he game taught he him. taught children how to do quarter circles in the yeah. middle of the thing, and then he talks about Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> and the thing is, Sakurai never fucking played Banjo Kazooie, so he's like, I, I don't know. This move's called like Ratatat Dash or something. This move's called the uh, Bazooka Banjo Bird. Banjo Kazooie came out on the. Nintendo 64, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Sakurai... Cool. So why did Banjo-Kazooie get added if Sakurai doesn't even know what the fuck this game is? That's because Banjo-Kazooie was number four on the Smash ballot, or somewhere. I don't know the exact number that he ranked Pretty in. high up. He was pretty high up on the Smash ballot. Legendary Scrimblo. For real. Legendary Scrimblo. <laughs> then we get Terry Bogard from King of Fighters. The game that inspired Sakurai to make Smash. The game that inspired Sakurai to, main Sma to make Smash, and also, I believe, I believe he was one of the other characters that was high up on the Smash Bros. Oh, really? Because it was really popular in Spain. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then we get Byleth from Fire Emblem, yeah! a game that hadn't come out yet. Like, no, I mean, Fire it wasn't Emblem. out yet, but it just came it out. It came out the day it was revealed, I think. <laughs> And, and fun fact, watch the Y2K lecture, but the person who voices uh, <laughs> Alex Yeek was going to be the voice actor for Byleth, but he got removed right before he got his character him. got revealed in Smash. Damn. I remember waking up at 9 a.m. for the new Smash character, and it was a Fire Emblem thing. They didn't even like try to like hide it and build up to it like in the other They were trailer. just like, yeah, it Fire Emblem. It just starts emblem, off with a Fire Emblem cutscene, and I cut it off. <laughs> I specifically remember sitting there, I see like Fire Emblem shit, I cut off my laptop and oh, I go back to bed. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention, there was a specific character got, that got revealed with Terry Bogard, and his name is Sans Undertale. Oh yeah, <laughs> Sans. <laughs> Now, Sans Undertale.
Undertale gets added as an outfit for me, Gunner. <laughs> so technically not a character, but the story behind it is that one day, Toby Fox, creator of Undertale, went to Sakurai's house and made a deal that if he could beat Sakurai in a best of three, he could put a character in Smash Brothers. And then he fucking did it. My <laughs> fucking <laughs> dear <laughs> lord, man. the man's a fucking god. Yeah. Toby Wait. Fox, my boy! Doesn't Toby Fox live in America? Yes. Yeah. He flew out to Japan to fight Sakurai. Sakurai to fight <laughs> <laughs> Toby Fox doesn't speak fluent Japanese, so throughout the whole thing, he's calling Sakurai's car the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So that's the story of how Sans Undertale got added to Smash. Then we get another DLC character, Min Min. Min Min almost breaks the game on launch. Like the yeah, Pokemon? Min -min. No, like from ARMS, the fuck? Uh. <laughs> Min Min, the most unfun Smash character to play and to fight against. Yeah, Min Min's whole gimmick is that she has really long arms. And like, really, like, stage. They stretch across the stage and she can hit you. For Literally, her matchup against anyone with bad recovery is 90-10 because no one can recover against Min Min unless they have a really good recovery. So then we get our next DLC character. It's fucking Steve from Minecraft, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So no, yeah, he, no this literally, this this reveal is costs he, Twitter, wait, what's up? Is he six feet tall? Is, is Steve? Steve from Minecraft, in Minecraft, is six feet tall, if you convert it into, like, real world units. He's okay. pretty tall. Is I, he, does he maintain this height differential in Smash? I don't know, I didn't keep track of the heights in this game, Just I'll be honest. But he does, he does have, like, the same jump height that this he does Smash in Smash reveal, when this reveal happened, Twitter literally went down. Twitter crashed yeah, when it was revealed. Literally <laughs> broke the internet. <laughs> I, made a, I made a comic about waking up one day, finding out that Steve was in Smash and having an existential crisis. <laughs> and then I We're submitted it as an assignment in my art class. The fucking timeline. Hell yeah. There are unfun, uncool, unsexy people upset about <laughs> Steve's and. I wasn't upset. I was just trying to figure. I was trying to rationalize it. I know, but I knew people were like, "Uh, Steve, come on." This is like, what? <laughs> Bro, this is Smash. All right. Next character gets revealed, and it's Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. He has okay. a big sword. Kills Mario. Next character gets he's, revealed. He's sword fighter, though. Next character gets revealed, and it's Pyra and Mithra, two booby ladies with swords. Let's Everyone go. Like that. Watch the Xenoblade 2 lecture. Yeah. yeah. Next character gets revealed, and it's the fucking guy from Tekken. I forgot his name. Kazuya. Kazuya. He's cool. Even I don't really care about Tekken. Parts. Okay, this lecture was given like six or seven months before it was uploaded. So I just want to say that I like Tekken now. It took a while for me to come around on it, but I gotten a lot more interested in it recently. I watched Tekken Bloodlines, but, but even before that, I found some characters like King and Paul Phoenix and Negan from The Walking Dead to be very interesting. So I just want to add a little note that I like Tekken now. I didn't when I gave this lecture, so just a little there. It's crazy. Oh yeah, you have to do motion inputs with him as well. Yeah, all the fighting game characters, you do like motion inputs instead of the- You have to do their actual inputs in the game yeah. to play as them. And then, the final DLC character gets revealed, oh, yeah. and it's Kingdom Hearts Sora, everybody! A DISNEY character, by the way! The shot has a the Disney Mickey character. The most expensive shot. They, the they had a Mickey silhouette that cost them like 10 grand to put into the trailer. <laughs> no, literally! <laughs> really? The most magical trailer I've ever seen for anything, by the way. Yeah, yeah. and then you play as Sora, and he's... Fucking like, Bayonetta, wow, but worse. I fucking came. <laughs> when that happened, by the way, um... Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the bathroom, so it's fine. Like, I was already broken. I was still recuperating from fucking Steve. But, like, I when so Kingdom Hearts 2 is literally, like, one of my favorite games of all time. So like, I fucking love Kingdom Hearts, and I'm, so, like, I still am so happy that, like, Sora is a fucking smash, dude. Like, I fucking love Sora. All right. I went a little too much into the DLC characters because most of that doesn't matter. <laughs> but Ultimate comes out and uh, they run a melee tournament and an ultimate tournament and I forgot who won the melee tournament. Wait, but who won the Smash Ballot? The Smash Ballot was won by Sora. Yeah. Yes. But the winner of uh, <coughs> Evo 2018 or 2019, Evo 2019. Wanna. Fuck. Evo. <laughs> he won Evo at some point. 
<laughs> this guy won Evo 2019. The reason I got confused was because yeah, I also forgot to mention that Evo 2018 was the last time Melee was added to Evo. In oh, 2019, yeah. Melee's removed from the setup, and a lot of people are upset about this. Yeah. A lot of people were tweeting free Melee on Twitter. Yeah, that's a different I thing. I don't remember. Oh, it was? Oh, damn. Oh. Yeah, that's a different thing. That I was tweeting in prison Melee. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Asshole. So... Yeah, basically, Melee is no longer at EVO, and they're on their own, and ever since then, Melee sort of just died off, and none of it really mattered. Damn. <laughs> but MK Leo wins uh, Smash Ultimate's yeah. EVO thing. McLeo. By the way, the people, this is the biggest uh, Smash tournament in history. There's like 3,000 entrants and like wow. a $35,000 prize pool, and Sakurai congratulated MK Leo for winning personally. Holy like shit. Like he came to the tournament and shook hands with him. Oh my god. Whoa, MK Leo, everybody! You, can, you might have noticed, but I'm not very uh, enthusiastic because what happens next is pretty bad. Yeah. The quarantine series. Yeah. <clears throat> it's really bad. So remember the plague that just happened? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> just. Just. Remember the plague that's still happening? <laughs> Wait, you mean that, like, liberal conspiracy that, like, there's some virus we have to wear masks for? <laughs> what do you mean? Stop! We're gonna get fucking cancelled! No, we're gonna get the monetized! The pandemic! The pandemic! So, basically, when people went indoors because it wasn't safe to go outdoors because there was, like, shit in the air or something. <laughs> <laughs> People could not play melee tournaments anymore because melee didn't have any way of playing online. And ultimates online was absolute Gar dog garbage. Shit. Garbage. Garbage. <laughs> garbage. Garbage. It's so bad that the that the tier list changes during this time because of how different the meta is. Sonic became a top tier. Sonic became a fu fucked up. Sonic it. became the best character happen. in the game. Zoners just got an instant buff because people couldn't react to them as fast because there was like a seven frame delay yeah. that, you, that was just guaranteed. And if you had bad internet, the game would frequently crash. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bad. Not good. Basically, no one can play Smash Brothers anymore. Competitively, at yeah. least. Then some people who play Melee was like, fuck you, Sakurai, we're gonna do our own thing. And they make Slippy. Slippy is Melee's very own netcode. It is made with rollback netcode, which means if the game lags, it doesn't pause the entire game. It just tries to predict what the players are going to do. And it's so good, you don't even notice it's happening. Is that true? Have you played it? And can you like confirm? I, I played on Slippy, and I can tell you that I did not even notice I was playing online because mm -hmm. the connection was so smooth. It's really good netcode. So tournaments for Melee start opening up, and the big house announces that they're going to do their own Melee tournament. Uh, then they get a cease and desist from Nintendo. Yeah. Woo! I remember this happening. Yeah, this is we're getting to like recent shit that is happening now. Fuck yeah. Nintendo. Fuck Nintendo. <laughs> so a lot of the, the people get Nintendo. people get so upset about this that uh, the Splatoon people who the play Splatoon, Splatoon people. <laughs> Platoon players start changing their name to Free Melee mid tournament, <laughs> and so many people do that that they have to start stop. They have to stop streaming the tournaments because they don't want people to see the Free Melee tags. Another thing that happens during this time is Edicons. Uh, shit. Uh, there's this guy called Desmond Amofa who went online yeah. as Attica and he passed away. Uh. So people to to honor his memory, people make uh, custom Joy Cons for Etika or like in Etika's like likeness, mm -hmm. and Nintendo sends a cease and desist for the fans who were making these Joy Cons, and people were not very happy about it. Nope. Uh, eventually, they agreed that they were allowed to make Joy Con like slips or like things you put on your Joy Cons. I think that was the conclusion, but they did not get sued, thankfully. And you might have been noticing that for a while now, Nintendo's been fucking over the competitive scene. Yeah, fuck Nintendo. And Sakurai does not really like the competitive scene. Kind of, he shook hands with MK Leo, but also he made Brawl. I'm pretty sure he but actually also, made Also, he made Brawl. <laughs> <laughs> so... Kinda quirky. Kinda quirky, though. 
So we need to talk about some Maybe shit. Not like the other game developers. Uh, a, a person named Anonymous Smasher s puts out a twit longer explaining what the fuck Nintendo's deal is with the Smash community. Um, let me fucking get to this in my notes because there's a lot. Oh god, we're. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Oh no. I forgot about the crab incident. <laughs> oh my god, yeah! Well, after this, we'll get to the crab incident. Okay. I'm sorry, because that happened before the quarantine series. It's okay. <laughs> when I saw that in my notes, I panicked. <laughs> okay. God, you have to hear about the fucking so, crab incident. One problem, and one of the reasons why all of the tournaments that have been running have been community led, is because Nintendo would charge ridiculous fees for licensing for tournaments. So MLG CEO, or what, what exactly? It's like MLG, what the fuck is it in my notes? Red Bull, Twitch, ESL, all of them would not host Smash tournaments because it was so expensive to license these games for tournaments, and they just wouldn't do it. Eventually, oh, God dang it, even the notes suck. Sometimes Nintendo wouldn't give a license out for Melee at all. Remember EVO 2013? The reason they didn't want Melee at EVO 2013 is because the next year Smash 4 was coming out and they didn't want the attention to be brought on an older game. Mm -hmm. Nintendo would sign contracts with a bunch of uh, esports leagues to start a whole Smash series, like a competitive Smash series, for Smash 4. Like a whole league. And then they strung everyone along until Ultimate came out, and then they canceled the deal altogether. Oh my god, what? A quote from one of the representatives at Major League Gaming wrote, goes, I know this is disappointing news, and believe me, we don't like it either. There's just no way around it. A company of our size simply has to play by the rules. I know a lot of you guys have seen Smash tournaments streamed online, and are probably wondering why we can't just do the same thing. The answer is because we are a real company with real visibility and real things to lose. We can't fly under the radar like a tournament can. Or like a local tournament can, nor would we want to. So, yeah. Nintendo is the Disney of games, I guess? Well, water's what? <laughs> Basically, Nintendo sucks. I hate Nintendo. You hate Nintendo. We all hate Nintendo. Ben Nintendo ben hates ben us ben back, ben so it's mutual. Ben Nintendo yep. hates me back. He, they you like should, you. you, you play casual. Yeah, because I play Brawl. They like Because you play Brawl still. <laughs> And you bring your bench back. That being said, how much money have you given Nintendo into your life? Wait, what? How much money have you spent on Nintendo in your life? Uh, not applicable. At least <laughs> no fifteen hundred. No. <laughs> One thousand five hundred to be uh, specific. I don't know the exact uh, number, but a, a large amount of money. How much money have you spent on Disney, Tyler? None. Really? Damn. Never seen him and he'll never tell you why. <laughs> oh, right. you know what? I did pay to see Infinity War. I didn't ah! torrent, I didn't torrent that one. Ah! Oh no, my twelve dollars. <laughs> Alright. Disney Sim. <laughs> okay, so I, I forgot about the crab incident. We need Please to talk, talk about, about the crab it. incident. It's my favorite part of this. So story. there's a tournament that happened in Laurel, Maryland. Woo! Whoa! Woo! Hell yeah. Pound 2019. Oh, okay. Pound 2019. And Hungry Box is going to be there. Yes. Oh, Hungry yes. Box is going to be yes. there. Who and else is going to be there? Mango is going to be there. Who and else? I think Leffen's going to be there. <laughs> Leffen might be there. I don't remember. Ooh. <laughs> so we're all going to Pound 2019, everybody. Woo, woo, woo. And so it goes to Grand Finals. Hungry Box is fighting Mango, and Hungry Box wins. And he's like, woo, I won. And then all of a sudden, he gets hit in the face by something. And he looks around in the crowd and sees a crab on the stage. <laughs> so he picks it up, starts waving it around, is like, hey, who threw this at me? It's Maryland, bro. It's just fun. It doesn't exist here. So, someone, <laughs> someone threw a crab at Hungry Box. Nobody knows why. It's believed that Leffen had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he fucking planted the crab. No, 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 no. The crowd and you see Leffen in a Because we know Leffen didn't went. throw it. We know who threw it. I don't remember who, what his name was. But it's believed oh. that Leffen was like, hey, uh, could you throw this crab at Hungrybox? <laughs> After the tournament, was the you know? seasoned at least. It no, it was a raw crab. Oh my god. It was just a fucking crab. Imagine if it was alive. I want to see this. I want to see this. Money! Money, money, money! Ah!
<laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god. That was like, that was actually how I started like, learning about the competitive Smash was seeing that video. <laughs> and then like I started like reading about it and I was like, damn, this shit's kind of cool actually. A bit of shocky you lore for you, if you can hold this for a second. So, the first film job I applied to after high school was actually at this venue. And they rejected me. Damn. Yeah, fuck those dudes. You could have been filming this. Yeah, I, yeah, I could have been here. It was the same year. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah, so fuck that done? venue. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> fuck you, Laurel. So that's going fuck on. Fuck you, Laurel. <laughs> Quarantine series, right? Oh shit. Oh, and I gotta talk about lot. this shit now. This is shit. I gotta talk about it now. The purge, the excellent. All right, so we're gonna be talking about sexual assault, suicide, a lot of bad stuff. We're gonna put a content warning right here. Skip this segment if you don't want to learn about this stuff. Uh, let me look in my notes to make sure I'm getting all of this right because this is really important that I get my information right. Sexual misconduct allegations, everybody! Yeah. Woo! What? Wait, you didn't remember this shit? No, I mean, you just jumped into you like, yes! Yeah, sexual assault, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> Woo! Woo! I love kids, Charlie! I love kids! <laughs> whoa, 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 Pim, I would be screaming that at the top of your lungs. God damn it. So, <laughs> in, in 2020, while the competitive scene is at like the lowest point it's been <laughs> since 2001 when they were playing in their mom's basement um, A wave of allegations started coming out against many major people in the smash community It started with this one player named Papa who accused this one commentator named Senpai of grooming him in 2016 Sounds about right uh, Other people came out with their own stories against Senpai and Senpai was eventually barred from working with the competitive community after this happens, 100 community members would be accused of sexual misconduct allegations, including zero. And a new person we need to talk about called Sky Williams. Sky Williams! So, let's. I want to put a little preface on this that it's really hard to know exactly what went down, so if I get something wrong, I apologize. I did my best to, like, scourge through all the information I could find on what was happening at this time, so this is, to the best of my knowledge, what was going on. If I'm wrong, please call me out and say what the correct thing is. I'd rather the correct information come out than me, whatever, you say things. Sky Williams, right? He is a big YouTuber in the Smash community, and he talks a lot about Smash Brothers. He gets five houses that he puts a bunch of, like, the idea is that, like, you know how we have, like, TikTok houses? This was, like, an early progenitor where we get a bunch of competitive Smash members and put them in a house together, and everything will go great. <laughs> Totally. Why would you do that? Is that like a reality show or not a reality like, show? Like just like a housing. Could system. you imagine? Where it's like though? we're all into competitive smash, so we'll all live smell. together and help pay rent, and everything will be fine. The water bill doesn't exist. The water bill doesn't exist. <laughs> oh my so god! The problem with exist. this is that, as you can imagine, a lot of these allegations came out <laughs> from these sky houses, and because oh, sky was no. in charge of all of these houses. He was made complicit in all of these things happening. Yeah. Now, Sky Williams was not at a good point in his life when all of this shit was going down. Uh, and it's pretty normal if you live in a mansion to be drunk half the time and not know what 12 people are doing in your house. So I completely understand Sky Williams not even knowing that shit is happening. It's also really easy to ignore things if they're convenient to ignore. That is also true, yes. So, all of this is bad. Sky Williams is being put on the center stage because this is all happening in his houses. He also, apparently, would, like, pick up valuable objects and threaten to break them if he didn't get rent money in time. A lot of people would just not pay rent, and so he would just break shit. Shark. I think there's <laughs> also a problem in the TikTok houses. I think so, yeah. I'm not that familiar with TikTok houses, but I believe that also happens a lot. So Sky Williams, uh, at one point I believe he borrowed three hundred grand from people throughout all of these houses. Whoa. 
At one point, someone lended him fifty-five thousand dollars, and this was all to pay for a can for uh, what was it? It was to pay for a cancer treatment because apparently Sky Williams had cancer. We'll get to that. Uh, just for those people who know what happened and know exactly what the truth is behind this, we will get to that. I will explain. But a bunch of people were like, "Hey, you loaned three hundred thousand dollars for cancer treatment for yourself." And then you spent it on penis enlargement surgery? <laughs> no fucking way! What? <laughs> so, now that I dropped that bombshell on you, I need to tell you the truth. Because this is what people believed at the time. The truth is that this money wasn't going to Sky Williams' cancer treatment. It was going to his dad's cancer treatment. Okay. And his dad told him, hey, I have cancer, I need money. So he got all this money, gave it to his dad, and then his dad spent it on penis enlargement surgery. <laughs> so how did he get for you for that? Telephone game. People heard, oh, he borrowed $300,000 for cancer treatment and got penis enlargement surgery. <laughs> But wait. Do we know what kind of penis enlargement surgery? I don't. I, maybe <laughs> we do. We need the details. <laughs> there are people who do, and I'm not one of those Where people. Is it? Put a picture of his dick up right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just put this lecture on Pornhub. It's cool. <laughs> I see a lot of ads for like penis enlargement products that are only like yeah. 40, 50 bucks. Why did he need 300,000? I literally don't know. <laughs> Turn his fucking dick into a tree. Gotcha. Like, <laughs> so yeah, tripod. this isn't Sky Williams scamming people, it's his dad scamming him. Damn. And I want to make that clear, because after all this shit goes down, this this is another case of the Smash community making like mainstream news. I believe this is the point where CNN is reporting. Yeah, yeah, this is what? CNN is reporting Sky Williams is responsible for sexual for a hundred sexual conduct misconduct allegations because a bunch of people were doing sexual misconduct in his houses. Woo! And so right, this was we're going mainstream. Sky Williams. <laughs> Could not get another job. He leaves like YouTube because he's getting flamed everywhere. And he yeah. could not get another job because he had this big gap in his resume when he was doing YouTube. And people would be like, oh, hey, what's this big gap in your resume? And I was like, oh, I was a YouTuber. And they look him up online. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Not only that, but he would try to get therapy for all the shit that was happening. And his therapists kept rejecting him. He went through <laughs> three different therapists and they all just refused to see him. Apparently they can do that. What? <laughs> yeah. So Sky Williams is fucked right now. Uh, bro, this didn't, bro, did, bro didn't even really like do anything. Like he really didn't. He was kind of like a scummy landlord guy, but he didn't sexually assault anyone, to my knowledge, at least from my research, he didn't. But that's aye, what happens aye. with Sky Williams. Now, someone who lived in these houses is zero. Zero is living in these houses, and they're like, I believe there are like four different allegations against Zero, and they're all like so muddied and confused, and it's like, he, sh he dated a, like a 15-year-old, like a but then it turned out that she was actually 16 at the time, and then like, fuck, he like showed hentai on the TV screen, and then he would show like another underage girl like, like porn Craigslist ads or something, and like... <laughs> I tried my hardest to follow what was going on, and I couldn't figure out who was doing what. So here's the highlights reel. The low here's lights reel? I don't know what to call it. The shit reel. Shit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Zero apparently dated a minor. That happened. That yeah. was true. He did do that. And since then, he has been banned from tournaments. Uh -huh. That's why he no longer shows up in tournaments. Yep. Zero also allegedly put hentai on a TV screen and would allegedly show random people in tournaments hentai. This is not true. The problem is that despite this not being true, Zero apologized for it anyway. This is really confusing and we'll get to this. Uh, the actual story is that it, like when he was showing, I believe with the TV thing it just didn't happen at all and with the uh, with the showing random people in tournament thing, he was literally just talking about like, hey, this is my waifu, what's yours? And he would show like a picture of a screenshot from an anime. And apparently, like, telephone game, Zero does hentai. But like, not exactly, but we'll get to like, why that is. Uh, in fact, we'll get to that now, because that's basically the gist of what Zero is being accused of, as far as I can recall. 
people can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but the reason Zero apologized for showing hentai to people when he didn't is because of Leffen. Leffen gaslights Zero he into returns. believing all of this happens. Mm -hmm. He literally tells Zero, you did show people hentai, and it gets to the point where Zero just starts believing it. Zero starts believing he did all of this bad stuff, and this is why Zero makes, like, three different apologies around this time. Is this a, like, Zero lived constantly drunk because he was a successful Smash player? No, this is, like, Zero... There's Zero has some personal drama behind him, but basically he did not have the best... He did not have a good upbringing at all, and he was very, very unsocial. And so when people would tell him stuff like, hey, you can't film in the middle of a Walmart without people's permission, he wouldn't get why. And so eventually he just learned to trust people when they say, hey, you can't do that, that's a bad thing. And so when Leffen would go and tell him, hey, you can't show random people this, this is hentai, he just believed it. What a fucking penis. This is probably the worst thing Leffen does throughout this entire thing. And honestly, I don't think I... Like... Fuck laughing, all right. Fuck, fuck laughing. Oh I regret calling him the hottest one on the board. Like a start. That dude is a it's, fucking. Especially dick. since now we have like zero on here yes, and he Sky Williams. So I mean, since the beginning. I don't. I don't know. He's been fucking thing. shit up since like two thousand. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally useless dick fucker. Yeah, I hate that I have to do this in an addendum. I forgot to mention this in the actual lecture, and it's pretty important. But after all the stuff with Zero went down, he would later attempt suicide, and he would get rushed to a hospital, you know, he got taken care of, he's fine. And they had a wellness check put on him, right? And Jisoo, one of the people that uh, came up with these accusations against Zero, would try to get this wellness check taken down on him, because according to her, it was rude to the victims. Now, I also want to point out that I've highlighted two of these accusations that came out among hundreds of thousands, and I haven't had the time to go through all of them. The two that I've highlighted, I'm very skeptical of, and they seem to be false, but that doesn't mean that the other ones were not false. I think there was a serious problem when you have a children's party game that gets taken to this extreme, and you're mixed with a bunch of 20-year-olds with social anxiety, and 15-year-olds who want to play their favorite game on a stage. Um, obviously, a lot of things went wrong with that. And I also want to point out that as much as these accusations were true, that doesn't mean that people didn't take advantage of the situation to try and get competitors they didn't like taken off of the stage. And Zero did bad stuff, right? He dated a 16-year-old probably shouldn't have done that. I just think that the other stuff that happened was kind of also bad. That's mostly my take, and I don't really want to talk about this drama stuff anymore, so let's get to the the lecture, back to the lecture. Ooh. Speaking right. of speaking of Leffen, we got to talk about evidence that's it too. What? <laughs> No, you want to tell the 12 years of research? <laughs> I, I don't even We're rolling. Okay, very briefly, the 12 years of, of, of knowledge or whatever thing. <laughs> Salem tweeted something out that was like, I have 12 years of smarts on Melee or something, and Leffen roasted him, and that was the story. And a lot of people sided with Leffen because he was really funny. All right. <laughs> Evidence that zip, too. So remember Hax? Remember how Leffen was being a dick to Hax? Hax is getting really not happy with Leffen, and he's starting to do a lot of research on the shit Leffen is doing, and he releases a video that's three hours called Evidence.Zip2. It opens up with three minutes of preamble, and after that, there's a quote from Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> the very first segment of this video is calling Leffen a totalitarian dictator in the Smash community Smash on the level of Mao, Stalin, and Light Yagami. <laughs> Because he's a genuinely like doing harm, and by taking it to this extreme, you cannot take it seriously. Exactly. This is the problem. Levin is actually a bad person, but Hax is taking it so far that he's like complaining about times Levin wore Adidas on stream. Like he is going way too far with like everything Levin did wrong. 
Uh, he talks about the shit he did to Hungrybox, which was true. He talks about the shit Leffen did to him, which was true. He took a potato chip. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, because the video literally starts off with calling him a totalitarian dictator, <laughs> like Light Yagami, and bringing up the fact that he had Light Yagami as his profile picture as evidence, is a big problem. And a lot of... That's really funny. <laughs> a lot of people side with Leffen on this. We've really, really seen the Light Yagami, though. <laughs> nice argument, but anime profile pick. <laughs> anime profile pick. So a lot of people side with Leffen on this, and eventually some tournament organizers decide that Hax is now banned from tournaments for Jesus. stalking Leffen. Wait, he got banned? He gets banned, and the report says that he was allegedly stalking Leffen. Oh this is not fucking true, he just yeah. looked online for shit he did. But... Basically, no matter how fucking stupid evidence that Zip 2 was, it wasn't worth Hacks getting banned. Hacks would later make a revised version of evidence that Zip 2 that removes the shit about him being literally Hitler. But, <laughs> but the damage was already done and nobody watched this. He then makes evidence that Zip 3 because that was around the time when the shit Leffen did to Zero came out and he starts talking about that. Nobody watches this because they're all laughing at Hacks for the fucking evidence that Zip 2 Hitler shit. Why and is he so, even trying at this because, point? Because Leffen is like ruining his career, kind of, is and one? also Leffen's a dick. Leffen banned him from tournaments and is destroying his company. That's true. Yeah, and so at this point, Hax is banned from all tournaments, which I mean, I don't even remember if he recovered, his hand recovered, or if he was able to perform in tournaments anyways, but that's still not good, his and Hax should be unbanned. He did recover, I looked it up earlier. Okay, he did? Yeah. Hax should be unbanned. Let's, let's see the boy in tournament again. Yeah! yeah. Let's go, Hacks. Speaking of tournaments, that's the end of evidence. That's it, too, by the way. Speaking of tournaments, we need to talk about another tournament that yeah, happens. In fact, the only tournament that matters that in the quarantine mm -hmm. series. Because Why after... Why things happen to bad people? Or was it the other way around? That, you said it right. But basically, after Ultimate was at EVO 2019, and because Ultimate's online was so shitty that they couldn't do tournaments anymore, Ultimate gets removed from EVO, and thus no more tournaments, no more Smash tournaments have been at EVO since. Oh yeah, did EVO get cancelled that year too? Because, like, uh, I don't know. Because I know, like, the sexual assault thing, it wasn't just Smash, it, like, rippled out into, like, the greater fighting game community. It may be, I'm not too familiar with that. But we need to talk about a guy called Waidu. His full name is Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People. What the fuck? And he runs a tournament called Bad Things Happening to Good People. What the fuck? The rule of this tournament is you can do literally anything as long as both players agree on it. If you want to just do a 1v1 with standard rule sets, you can do that. If you don't even want to play the fucking game and want to play rock, paper, scissors again instead, you can fucking do that. What? <laughs> You can do two v ones if you if both players agree. One player, one player made a deal that if you could hit me at all in a three minute match, you win the entire game. And if not, I win. And they agreed to it. The other player went Sonic and ran around the fucking stage and won. <laughs> Wait, what, did he take the stage? I, I think it, I don't remember, but it was Battlefield. So uh, I mean, that's a good stage for that. I know, but like great cave offensive though. Oh my True, good God. point. Yeah. I didn't even temple. think about that. No. Fucking temple. Palatina's yeah. temple. <laughs> but that would have been allowed. That would have been allowed. That's terrible. Basically, Hungrybox enters this tournament, and because Hungrybox is a very influential person at this point, he's starting to just bribe people into dropping out of the tournament, which is legal. And not not only legal, it's encouraged by Waidu and the tournament <laughs> organizers. What, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is why do bad things happen to good people? A bribery box. Bribery box. He starts bribing his way throughout this whole tournament. And the thing is, because Jigglypuff still isn't very good in Ultimate, she's a lot better than she was in Smash 4, but not very good. Hungrybox is at a disadvantage when it comes to most matchups, and so he wants to not play as many games as possible. So he's going to try and bribe people throughout it. One person rejects. What? Did you just say Jigglypuff is a she? Yeah, Jigglypuff is is, is female. In I don't actually know. Is it? 
Right. I don't know. So yeah, I just Pokemon, Jigglypuff can be a he or a she, so and I don't Pokemon know if it's confirmed in the game. Genders, no, yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon have like confirmed genders in Smash. I don't know which one Jigglypuff is. So if I misgender Jigglypuff throughout this whole lecture, I apologize. I just didn't realize that gender was on the table. For yeah, <laughs> some of them are like back Piranha Plant Pikachu is their gender. gender. Piranha Plant is female. Yeah. Fuck, I've been misgendering this whole a, fucking time. <laughs> Did you say I've been misgendering him this whole fucking time? I said her. Wait, I didn't say her. I didn't say her. Excuse me, his pronouns are here. <laughs> so, so Hungry Box plays one match throughout this entire time. Someone did not take him up on the bribe, and then just gets three stocked by Hungry Box because he's yeah. still good. Hell yeah! Hungry and so it gets to the very end of the tournament, Box. and the person who's who's facing against Hungry Box literally just did two v two or one v ones this entire time to get up here. Boring player, but really strong. And Hungry Box does not want to fight them because if he does, he will lose. So the person at the end is making the deal. Hungry Box has to give up his Evo tournament like arcade stick that he won as a prize <laughs> from Evo what? to to win this tournament. And Hungrybox is debating this because this is the only tournament that matters this year, and he <laughs> wants to win it. So eventually, he's trying to come up with other things like, "Do you want a hundred dollars? Do you want two hundred dollars?" And the guy is like, "Okay, here's the deal. You don't have to give me your fucking arcade stick, but you do have to give me a spot on your podcast, Hot Ones." Hot ones? What? Is that like hot ones? Bootleg hot ones? Yes. Did he do oh it? God. He did, and then he won the tournament. That was that's it. That was it. That was the that's most. All he had to that do. Was, oh, that was the only Imagine tournament that mattered. Box and what the, the way, fuck is this? By the shit? way, I did not mention this before, but two thousand people entered this tournament. Yeah. Two thousand people. The trailer for this, it was really. Funny. This tournament. <laughs> The, tur the the trailer for this tournament is it's literally like perfectly. Yeah, it's literally like Renaissance paintings of people getting stabbed in the face and shit. This just <laughs> in, this just say two thousand people take place in a uh, uh, a bribery contest. And wait, was this virtual? This was yeah, done this was online. online. Yes, it was what? online. And what year? Wait, was what's this twenty twenty or twenty twenty one? Twenty twenty. The guy was why do bad things happen to good people? If you just look up why do, I think you can find Sounds it. Sounds like a stand name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh. But yeah. Just to show the age of this lecture, Waidu would host a second tournament, like, this year, and it didn't go as well. It had the same rule set and everything, uh, but it had less entrance, and it wasn't as involved as the other tournament was. But the tournament ended when someone accused the other person of breaking one of the rules. I forgot which one, but a TO came in and pointed out, yep, they broke the rules, so they're disqualified. And that's how the winner of that tournament won. I don't even remember who won. Um, I didn't pay that much attention to it. I kind of, after this lecture, I kind of stopped paying attention to the community in general. But um, yeah, in case you were wanting to know more about that, since that happened after I gave this lecture... There you go. Why do bad thing or bad things happening to good people too was a tournament. Uh, it had a two thousand dollar prize pool, I believe, and some guy won on a technicality. Yeah. Two thousand people enter this tournament, which is comparable to the biggest melee tournament that was ever held. That's fucking insane. I can't do this anymore. So yeah, that's <clears throat> the last Smash tournament that has ever mattered. As a matter of fact. There have been some other majors that have been held. I tried watching Let's Make Big... Let, what was it? Let's Make Big Moves 2022. Uh, like, a bunch of people had to drop out because of COVID and shit. Yeah. And so, like, the tournament had, like, 30 or something people in the final bracket or whatever. I think it was actually, like, literally six people Let's at the end of the tournament. Let's Make Moderately Moves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the winner of that was Quiz. Who's Quiz? Who He's a Pokemon trainer player. Who the fuck plays Pokemon trainer? Wait a second. Where is his <laughs> rumor remains that Agatha, because he's literally the best character, he's Sakurai's favorite, he got nothing but buffs the entirety of Ultimate. And Cinderella. Where's you know? my soul queens? Um, in hell. <laughs> so, in hell. so, now, at some point, Good Nintendo morning. decides to actually host their own fucking whoa, tournaments whoa, for whoa. Smash Brothers, and they even include Melee in these tournaments. Whoa. What? Wow. So... 
this, these, I said these tournaments don't matter, and that's relative. Some people might care a lot about them. I apologize. Nintendo but Smashlands has not had an impact on the ranking. MK Leo is still the best uh, Ultimate player. Zero is still the best Smash 4 player, even though he's not playing games anymore. Get out of here. And Hungrybox is still the, the, the G. Hungrybox <laughs> is still the best. That's Hungrybox it. is still. He is the best. The best. best. Hungrybox. Drop man, let's go. Hungrybox is the best. Man. Despite the being the only one to take <laughs> showers, he was able to get through all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. So fuck. if you stay in school, you will be the melee champion. So to briefly talk about uh, the Smashlands, which was the tournament that was held by Nintendo. Um, Basically, the melee tournament went on, and people were playing it, and then, like, one match goes by, and someone's like, oh, okay, hold on, something's wrong. Uh, they look at, like, the, the options oh, menu, <laughs> and then they realize somehow knockback has been increased in the game, and so they fix that. People have been playing melee for so long, they can tell the difference when this happens. People can tell that knockback has been changed in the game, and it was, like, a 0.1% difference, or something like that, and people were like, okay, something's wrong here. So they, <laughs> so they just redid that match, and all is well, and literally the TOs for both games are like, wow, that was weird, but thankfully, that wouldn't happen to us at Ultimate, would it? <laughs> <laughs> so, the tournament continues, and people realize something's off about this, but they don't know what. The, content the tournament continues, and people are like, alright, what's going on here? They look, into the, they look into the options menu, and Underdog Boost has been turned on. What's which underdog Boost means that if you're, in the if you're losing, then your moves are stronger. So basically, it increases like attack and stuff is bad, not good. Yeah. But basically, they realized this after they already held a bracket. So they have to redo the bracket. Or continue the tournament as is. And, and this the is the Nintendo just, one, right? This is the Nintendo one. <laughs> the people, either this, either they just continue the tournament and the people who lost just like fucking See? got copped out of a victory. Or they have to restart the bracket. And I believe they just continue it and worry about it later. That's so yeah. fucking annoying. That is so fucking annoying. How does that even happen? Check the fucking options before you start the game. I believe, I believe so people were just going through the options to set it up, and then they just accidentally pressed left to, like, turn it on or something like that. Accidentally. Accidentally. Fuck, I believe it was an accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Turning on so, an underdog boost so you can, like, scope out the competition. That yeah. The bracket. <laughs> so there's, there's one last thing we need to talk about about Smash Brothers before we finish this lecture, and that's the fact that a lot of people thought Smash Brothers was really cool and wanted to make their own. So the first game to do this is called Punch Time Explosion, and it's a <laughs> cartoon... <laughs> Oh, it's wow. a Cartoon Network crossover does that fighting even game. Count? Yes. What do you mean? Does it count? I don't, I don't know. Cause it's jank. Is that it? It's janky as shit. And it no... is janky as shit. And uh, like, Bob, like that, Blossom yeah, is the best no. character in the game, and literally no one took it seriously, and like three people played it in the world. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not one of those three people. So I knew I what it was. Know. I wanted then you to play it, but I never did. All -Star. Then you got that's true. Then you got PlayStation All Stars, and it was also not very good. But like, you could play as a big daddy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. For Bioshock. Oh, that's fucking cool. Fucking fuck. That is cool as fuck. Uh, Japanese. You could play as Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, that was my favorite was one. Cool. When I found out you could fight Parappa so the Rapper cool. versus fucking Kratos, yeah, that was the best <laughs> thing that anyone did ever. I, I I really do wish they I really do wish I really do wish they brought back PlayStation All Stars and just made it good. Yeah, that would be so fucking cool. That would be sick. All right. What a shame. So they start making then the next uh, all out. Woo! No, the next one that matters is Riders of Ether. <laughs> I don't fucking know anything about Brawlhalla. Come from okay. Canada. Wait, what is, wait, what is it? The game. Oh, guys, Brawlhalla. <laughs> get Brawlhalla. Jesus Christ, guys! <laughs> Brawlout and Brawlhalla are games. That come from Panda game. That <laughs> Rivals of Ether comes out in 2015, and it's the best game it is. in this genre. <laughs> it's the, the best, best one. Game. It's the best game in this genre because, <laughs> like, they added all the mechanics people liked in Melee, but tweaked them so normal people could use them, and it's really fucking cool. You can wave dash, and there's a macro for wave dashing. Yeah, and it's fucking ass. Is this better than the M mod? Uh, yeah, 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 
Yeah. Was yeah. Marino. And you can play as furries, so. You can play as anyone, yes. bro. Yes. You can play as sure. Sonic in there. Yeah, well, now they've added Workshop. Yeah. They got so, in there. Rivals of Ether is very successful, and a bunch of people start making their own games. We get Brawl Out, Brawl Holla, Slap City, Smash Flash 2, um, which was uh, in Smash development for a really long time. Oh it's still in development. Yeah, it was in so long. The people I, the who are making Super Smash Flash 2 are now making Frame Makers, <laughs> which is an indie <laughs> crossover game. Yo, yeah, I already showed us that. Have my boy uh, Blade the Hedgehog in there? Yeah, Blade the Hedgehog was in Smash Flash 1. Yeah, it's, bring him back. Yeah, bring, bring back Blade the Hedgehog. I Bro, thought Blade the so Hedgehog would cool. be such a cool character to have. Yeah, fun fact, do, 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 do anyone know the fucking Mr. Incredible is playable in that? Yes! It's yeah, it's so so they did, a, they did an April show. Fool's video where they said they were going to add him to Smash Flash 2. And then they actually did, but he was not not really. They like they like made a ver they made like a playable Mr. Incredible, but they never released it. That yeah. sucks. Sucks. I remember getting excited when I found out Sandbag was in the fucking game. Yeah, that was so fucking. I cool. love that. All right, but there's one big game that gets announced, and it's one of the ones that I was most excited about: Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. Woo! I was just comes out in 2021 and is made by the people who did Slap City. Now the now the people that make like the melee like Smash games are getting mainstream attention. Now Nickelodeon is in on making one of these games. But not really because they half-assed it. Are the iCarly characters in this? Not the iCarly characters aren't in this. Unfortunately, I remember no like live action down shows. Wait, what? Down 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 <laughs> Apparently, they tried to get live action characters into the game and they just weren't allowed to from Nickelodeon. That's yeah. Stupid. Yeah, so Nickelodeon, apparently, like, yeah. this game comes out and it's cool, but like, so it's, not, it's jank. It's something feels something. it's missing something. And the reason it's missing something is because Nickelodeon was like, sure, you can make a game, but like, don't make it good or anything. They're like, okay, you can add alternate costumes, but don't add anything that's like not canon or shit. Then they announced that they're making a volleyball game with all the Nickelodeon mobile characters. Mobile, it's gotcha, a mobile, mobile game, mobile. gotcha game, and you can put on costumes for characters that aren't canon. They say, hey, you can make people say things in the game, but don't let them say anything that's not that they haven't said already in their canon. And so this led to like Toph saying, I love earthbending every time she wins a match or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and then uh, multiverses for multiverses. That's a okay. Thing. We will get to that, but really quickly after this game comes out and is really successful, despite it not being very good on launch, it sold really well. And so I'm on it. So yeah, <laughs> sometime after this, yeah. a leak comes out saying that three other companies are working on games <laughs> in the spirit of Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. One of them was Warner Brothers Multiverses, where you have Bugs Bunny, Batman, fucking Gandalf, I think. Okay. Steven Universe. <laughs> Steven Universe is in there. Rick yeah. Sanchez is in there. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. Ben 10. Ben 10. A, a Game of Thrones character. Arya Stark. I don't Jake fucking and know. Jake and Finn. Jake and Finn. It's sick. Fucking also, shaggy. Also, it's free to play. What, it is? Free yes. Free to play Gotcha Smash. I it's free to play that. Gotcha Smash. I didn't know that. And I watched the gameplay of it. It looks like it looks raw. really slow. Yeah. It looks. So really I'm hoping they just load it down for the trailer. Maybe it's my it's my like problem that. is just that it doesn't look right. It looks a little yeah. janky to me. Or at least, or at least we can like but, dark stalker that. But shit. after this leak comes out and <laughs> multiverses is revealed, we also are still waiting for two more Smash games to get announced. I'm hoping for a Shonen Jump one myself. That would be an actually, actually good one. Sound. An actually good yeah. one, yeah. Are you knocking the great Jump Force? I actually Jump Force really was like not, a, Force. not a so cool not a platform fighter. Anymore. I know, but I oh, actually <laughs> unironically do enjoy Jump Force. When I heard episode. that, I bought all the DLC because yeah, it was on sure sale, and did. I didn't want it to be lost media. Yeah, yeah, okay. Speaking of oh, me. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm, I'm in here. Fuck. Why I drew myself here? ugly as well, so no one can feel why, like that. Why? That looks so. Nuts. Why am I that here? Looks nothing <laughs> like you. <laughs> what? I, I like the effort though. If, it, yeah. if this doesn't look anything like me, then none of these people look like themselves. It so. looks like like Bonnie. Oh, from, oh, from you put yourself. In <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, fuck you. <laughs> but remember when you said you weren't a narcissist? <laughs> I drew myself ugly. Look at me. I got a big ass nose. <laughs> So why did I just put myself on here? Like, yeah, Ross, why can I actually fucking talk? Can we people like fucking seriously stop talking over me? It's getting fucking really annoying. God fucking damn it, you two. <laughs> I didn't say anything. God fucking damn it. <laughs> so, why am I on here? That's because 
Throughout this entire series, I have been following it. I played Smash 64 when I was a kid. I played Melee when I went over to a fr like my brother's friend's house. I, pl <laughs> I played Brawl when it came out. And I played Subspace Emissary. I played Smash 4 on launch. I played Ultimate on launch. I've been playing this entire series, and I, I suck, but I've been in the Smash community for a long ass time. And I gotta say, I really miss the good old days. I want to go back to when I was playing Smash 4 in the school cafeteria with the boys and I was ranking up, I was going 0-1-1 oh, one, one with like the one, best of the one. best. I don't know. It's kind of generous. I don't know. When I was going 3-0 against the boys. <laughs> and to be honest, that's probably just nostalgia talking. Smash 4 might, Ultimate is probably a better game than Smash 4, but I still have a connection to Smash 4. Like a lot of people have a connection to Melee. Despite it being really janky and really hard to get into, I would not recommend anyone play Melee. It is really hard to get Ooh. into. I would... You could play Brawl, I guess. It's such Sun a good game. Solely for the Subspace Emissary. Subspace Emissary. I would recommend anyone play Project M, though. I would recommend you play Smash 4. Project M. I would recommend you play Ultimate. All but whatever you do, don't get into the Smash community. Don't play competitive Smash or you'll end up like me. Do you want to be like me? <laughs> You're going to transform into that. Do you want to know what this means? Do you want to get this joke? No, you don't. Stop watching the lecture. Turn it off. <laughs>